This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hey, everyone. We have a sponsor. Ooh. Mm -hmm. My, oh, my. This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace.com. Set your website apart. Why are you two doing that? And why are you huh? doing... You started it. Yeah. You started it. How, did I start it? Yeah, you, you were like, just hey. started. You were like, hey. We Sorry. didn't want to leave you. We were a I team. guess I have a sultry voice and I didn't even know it. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Now Listen, I if you want... <laughs> If you want to build your own website, you got to use Squarespace. And when I say you, you got to. You don't I, have I a mean, choice. I mean, you, you have a choice, like technically. There's no, you know, no options. You got no choice. But it, like, you're backed it, in a corner. No, calm down. People have a if, choice. If there are any There's other only options. The only option is Squarespace. Squarespace. No, no, Squarespace is the best option. The, the only, only option. option. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, the reason I think it's the best option, only option, only one. Well, the reason that they feel it's the only option is because I mean, look, with Squarespace, you got easy to use tools, intuitive, Drag and drop. Okay, yeah, uh, it, it's very, very cheap. Oh, it's so cheap that you can get almost a supersized meal and still have money left over because it's that cheap. It's that cheap. It's that cheap. It has commerce uh, uh, tools. Yes, yeah, sales know what stuff. That means. Okay. Oh. <laughs> commerce, you know what commerce means? <laughs> commerce if you're running a business, you're going to use Squarespace. Don't know what that means. Right, they set on. you up with a free domain name. Yes, oh, go, yeah, beyond, get, go past this. Yeah, you can be like, I hate James.com. Hey, that's not fair. I was supporting you. <laughs> right? Goodness gracious. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the designs are uh, beautiful. You don't need HTML code, nothing don't like that. I don't know what HTML code is because that ended in 1998. No, it didn't. <laughs> what? No, it didn't. And if you sign up for today. Right now. Uh, 1998. No credit card required. You can sign up today. I have bad credit anyway, Greg. And if you use the offer code JUMP. Oh, I can spell JUMP. J-U-M-P. Get 10% off your first purchase. And do we get a profit of that? Don't. Talk about that. That's not necessary. Maybe we do. We're helping you it's out. Just, you're, supporting you us us. Out. you're supporting us. You're supporting us. We help you out. And you're you gonna help us out. All they need to know is that they get 10% off. They use the offer code Listen, jump. You get the, the jump. We get the jump. We, we jump, jump together. Too. We will jump together. Squarespace. Set your website apart. apart. Hey, did we go? Did I go into a movie thing? I forgot. I lost it. I think I knew what we were doing. And I lost yeah, like it. somewhere in the middle, I was like, "Are we ghosts?" I thought so too. But then Braid left us hanging. Yeah, so I didn't and then know he what... stopped doing it. I thought we were a team. Yeah, let's start the show. All right, guys, we are here uh, doing a little cold open. Yep. Um, Cold is is not an accurate word. No, it's not no, going to be cold at all. This is it's a, actually kind of tense. This is an open is a, that we don't want to do. Heated open. But we uh, got to. So Heavy heated open. Just to get it out the way, we have decided to review the film, uh, The Birth of a Nation. I know I've been saying uh, for a year I wasn't going to do it, but we, we got to. You know, we have uh, to. And in doing it, we realized that before we get to the discussion of the film, we would just want to talk a little bit about uh, the Nate. Parker controversy, um, uh, specifically his uh, 1999 alleged rape uh, case that previous, yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a trial that was had and uh, he was found innocent, though his co-writer and co-producer, uh, uh, a man by the name of, Ce how do you pronounce the name, Celestine? S Celestine? Sestin? Celestine, Celestine. Uh, was actually, was uh, also accused, but he was convicted, mm -hmm. served about six months in jail, uh, eventually was granted an appeal due to negligence of his attorney that represented him in the first trial. Uh, the case, he was then granted a, a new trial, uh, and the, the victim decided not to testify again, so... Therefore, uh, the case was thrown out, the charges were dropped, and he was uh, set free. Uh, we have in the studio... Oh, yeah, we have, we have, we have our, our astronomy club, you know what I'm saying, member with us, Keisha Zahler. <laughs> Keisha Zahler. You know? Keisha uh, Zahler. Full of opinions. <laughs> Full of opinions. <laughs> I mean, that's why, we, that's why we got you. you know, we wanted to make sure you were here. You know. 
Because we didn't want to talk about this as just like three dudes talking about a rape case. Yeah, yeah. it's a sensitive uh, subject, obviously. Um, I guess, like, I guess just to start off, like, uh, I don't know. What should we start off with? Well, I mean, the thing is, like, okay, how, how this how this case has affected this movie is that, you know, a lot of people have been... Right. Uh, boycotting the movie, and even um, the actresses in the film said they will respect, like, uh, uh, oh my goodness, I can remember her name, being Mary Jane. Gabrielle Union, who is a survivor of um, sexual assault, says, you know, she totally understands that women feel they don't feel the need to watch this movie. You don't need to see it. Um, so are some of the other actresses in this film. And, like, now this movie has not opened well, right? So this movie has right. not done well. It's currently well. not doing that well in the box office. I mean, it's, it's early days. It is a, an an Oscar contender, that being said, because of these allegations, because of the controversy that's surrounding this film, in a way that's much uh, much more heavy than, I would say, the controversies that surrounded Roman Polanski's The Pianist when that came out. Which, which or, Woody was, Allen, or, Woody Allen. or Woody Allen's anything. Um, so, uh, you know, I, there, there is this intersection of uh, women's... Uh, Rights, rape culture, you know, mm -hmm. and also uh, race. Um, you know, uh, Nate Parker is a black man. Uh, his friend Cel Celestine was also black, I believe. Yep. And the woman who was accusing them was white. Um, and there is a history of black men being uh, accused of raping white women. Um Obviously, that has happened, and, even, and it also has yeah. been a history of falsely b being accused. So there's a lot. It's like it feels like this particular thing is like jam packed with, yeah. you know, so much. Uh, I don't know. It, it's so much weight because it's actually been publicized. If you think about the, so this movie, at you know, some people may not know, is named after Birth of a Nation, which is. The film that famously, like, kind of... Uh, From 1915 or 1915. Which yeah. shows yeah. the KKK in, like, a great light. And the, the whole plot of that movie is that one of the escaped uh, black people attacks a, a white woman. Mm -hmm. And, like, the whole thing is them trying to find this guy and bring him to justice. Uh, the, it, yeah, the white, the, white saviors the white saviors are the KKK. Mm -hmm. Who comes The heroes of the movie are what, the KKK. What, yeah, and yeah. it actually uh, gave Rose... To one of the later, like second comings, third generation, second or third generation of the KKK, yep. it mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. expanded the KKK hugely. Yeah, and right. not also when that happened, like not only did their numbers go up, but this is when uh, lynch the the what they call, they call them public lynchings, right? Oh, the the, the public the, lynchings. The public lynchings mm -hmm. actually started happening more frequently, and then you know, yeah, again, yeah, again, but you mm -hmm. know, yeah. Well, I I think if I remember this stat correctly, uh, because of the original birth of a nation, uh, we got to a point where one in twenty people in America was in the KKK. That's insane! Wow, me Christmas. That's that's an insane stat. Yeah, uh, when I heard that, I was like, no, that can't be. That's chilling. Yeah, and because th that, I always like to think about, think about all the people who were too lazy to join the KKK at that moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, They were like, mm, I have hate in my heart, but like, I have a lot of commitments on yeah. my schedule yeah. right I don't want to, yeah. it's a lot of bleaching of those white robes. I mean, do I have that. a robe to give up right now? <laughs> <laughs> so much I'm, commitment. I'm actually I a little have... afraid of fire. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get a horse. Oh, oh. God, <laughs> that horse. But, uh, so, so there is history. I mean, and of course, like, um, one of the most famous cases is you know poor Emmett Till who yeah. who was I mean who was disfigured for as people called it was it a uh, wolf wolf calling her wolf calling a white woman uh, uh, well I mean what's what it called like the, the the he what is the thing like in the movies when it's like the wolf does the little the sound effect when like his eyes how yeah how? Like he, yes. but he whistled yeah. he whistled right? he yeah. whistled at a white woman and then he was uh you know disfigured and killed for it so there's a history of this thing. And yes. The question is, you know, what people are debating, like the, the woman who accused Nate Parker committed suicide um, 2005? Is that what it was? Um, oh, no, no, no. She committed suicide in 2012. 2012? Yeah. Yes. The alleged rape happened, uh, and, I'm, and forgive me for people who may be triggered by me using the phrase alleged rape. I just, like. Well, yeah. Yeah. According to our justice We're system, triggered by rape in general. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of tri oh, yeah. triggers. I, 
I in this discussion. I would, I would, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry for the assumption that if you clicked on this, that <laughs> you, you may, you may want to just skip forward. And I think uh, once we get to the talking of the film, we'll, we'll leave and this there, behind. I mean, Though but there, there also is might rape be, in the film. Yeah, so. there, there'll <laughs> yeah. be some Check triggers in the discussion um, of the film as well. Uh, yeah. So um, that occurred in 1999. I believe the trial happened in like 2001. Or at least yep. the, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, the woman killed herself in 2012, though Nate Parker, I guess the story, quote unquote, didn't break until, I guess, August, early August uh, this this year. Um, I think Variety released the article. Yeah. I think that's what got the most attention. Uh, Nate Parker, like, maybe a week or two, or a couple weeks later, then, like, posted on fa Facebook, uh, and it basically his statement to the moment that was happening where he did express, you know, sorrow for the woman's passing. Uh, also, you know, restated his innocence and but also like said that he didn't have a lot of empathy at the time. He probably would have handled things differently. Um, yeah, the, there are a couple of things that are just real. There's like three things I feel like we need to. What? Just to maybe address, right? One, uh, do we feel that people... It, is it right for people to be able to separate what's happening in this case in the movie? Like, or is it even possible? Is it, is I it possible mean, people do it all the time, but they do it for uh, typically white directors like if you look at Ilya Kazan and like remember when he got the like lifetime Oscar mm -hmm. and a bunch of people were like nah sitting and I I think it you're you have this very complex intersection because if you look at all uh there's many white artists who've been accused of horrific things in Hollywood uh, and eventually it gets silenced or they kind of fade away. But because you have the intersection of race in it and the threat of the black male and the um, fire of anti-blackness, which exists in terms of racism, anti-black racism, I think it's a perfect storm of like, there are people who are boycotting it because, uh, the, because of rape and I a hundred right. I, I as a woman I a hundred percent understand that I also have a hard time because we find so many more actions excusable when perpetrated by white men mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I feel like I was like we have to stop with the double standards and should we separate the art from the person I still don't know because if that's the case, like there's a lot of hip hop I should never listen to yeah. I mean, or yeah. dance to. I mean, there's a lot of think about. There's right. a lot of like anything where you're just like, I guess I can't enjoy but, that because but my I question know. is like what Keisha brought up. Not to cut you off, is like um, this happens. Like like John said earlier, Roman Polanski still makes movies like. When and he was convicted of, in, in what country? Uh, uh, he's like here. banned. It was here. He can't come he, back to America. He can't come back to he America. He can't come back to here. He can't come back he's here. He's also banned somewhere else, another country yeah. too, I believe. And I mean, Roman Polanski has the saddest history I've ever I known. I know. Like, I was like, Holocaust survivor. His wife was horrifically murdered. And he sexually assaulted a 13-year-old a yeah, like girl. girl. And At Jack Nicholson's house. <laughs> like, when Jack Nicholson wasn't even there. Uh, but, like, why... I. That's the question I have is like... And the pianist got multiple Oscar nominations. Not only yes. that, but people still are traveling to him to make movies. Like, he's still making movies. Woody Allen has a TV show coming out on Amazon right now that people are hailing like some, some, some second coming of Woody Allen. And it's... Honestly, he had an interview, which I read, and he just completely... Passed with the over Hollywood the Reporter, just, just they didn't ask him anything. Actually, did they not? They they did a they did a pro they did they did a, like a an op ed. Uh, his son, uh, Mia Farrow's oh, son, the son, yeah, um, wrote about how he had probably like sexually abused his sister, mm -hmm. and um, they let so they had that there like either an issue before or an issue after. But the issue with Woody Allen, where I believe Woody Allen's on the cover of the issue, and they have a full interview with him, didn't ask him about it once. I mean, think about this stuff. And, and my question now is that the fact, 
if this and again, you know, we're only saying alleged because again, he was acquitted. Like and I mean, it, I think it's right. he was acquitted, so we have to say alleged. We I mean, can't I mean, say I mean, we I mean, we cannot definitively say. Yeah, I mean, we, which also brings us rape. to the other thing, right? <laughs> of like, how much do we? How much should we entrust the court of public opinion? I think it should be said, you know, the fact rape culture exists definitely, and that so few men. I'm specifically speaking mm-hmm. to men. Uh, not that women don't rape, uh, but so few people, rapists, accused rapists, are ever convicted or brought to trial. Right. Right. Like that, yeah. it's yeah. so infrequent, and we have a huge disconnect in society because it's like the there's public opinion, but then there's the fact that like women are being assaulted, and the few times that it's like so clear, even then they're not. Uh, rapists are being given a slap on the wrist so it's like it's hard to not even when they are convicted i mean yeah it's hard not to be reactionary because it's like because you have to ask yourself well why would these women lie and uh without undermining the voice of women and their own and their control of sexuality and the fact that we are developing conversations around consent that we didn't have 10 20 years yeah that's the other thing i want to talk about yeah consent has like i don't think a lot of people understand consent that like if two people are in the middle uh, in the middle of a sexual act and you're like hey i want to do x y and z then halfway through x they're like hey no more x or z that has to like you're done yeah that's, you have that's to stop like, well, end. right and the thing that's even more tricky though and this is the thing we don't have these conversations in school nope both no. men both men and women don't understand consent because we do not have these conversations. We don't talk about, well, and the thing is I was reading some of Nate's, uh, basically his uh, deposition or Mm -hmm. the statement that he gave to police or or during the trial. And he was saying like, um, his, he accepted consent by, he was like, I was basically, I was doing these sexual acts. I didn't, I didn't say, do you want, this to be done i just you know started doing them and she was engaging in them with me she never said no she was engaging in them and there and like that to me counts as consent and i think and when you're talking about in the context of well afterwards somebody said that they you that you raped them that feels it feels like how could you right yeah but i think reality i think if people are being honest with themselves the majority of people, I think a vast majority of people have engaged in sexual activities without explicitly requesting or confirming or requesting well, doing yeah. sexual acts to the other person that they're yeah, doing. I, 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 I also think there's also the idea of um, the courage it takes as a woman to say no. Because one of the things you're talking about is having no idea the size of this woman versus... Uh, uh, Nate Parker and the other gentleman that like there is this idea of a woman's physical safety and like trying to physically say no versus verbally saying no like there just there's no culture around it and there's no history there's not a good track record in record in America of like trusting women that say no yeah. and want to say stop at a point that that is real and it's fine for a woman to say stop or to take hands off places and say no i mean to me it's like to me to me it's interesting because like john like you said it's like there's like i've never been in a relationship where it's like hey are we about to have sex right now that kind of confirmation you know but i do think kind of what keisha is saying is like sometimes people do get in situations where like you're you're doing stuff and someone changes their mind, right? Like if in the middle of this thing where like maybe like she, like this, the, the plan of even a miss to like she gave him oral, right? So like it started, it started, right? But in the middle of this thing, she was like, I'm not cool with this. So it was like, if you verbally say no, then that, I mean, that's all you can, right? I mean, that's it. That's just to clarify for the specifics of this case. Yeah. Uh, Nate, is claiming, and so is Celestine, that she never said no 
Yeah. That she never. And also, the also the victim was claiming that she didn't remember what happened, and that her memory is foggy, and that she was drunk. Uh, That's another thing too, man. I, like you don't learn in school about just alcohol and like these substances mm-hmm. that like. And most people engage in, se- especially when they're young, engage in sexual activities when they after they have been at a party and were drinking. Both parties, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. And and the thing is, it's like. We have such a, we have such a bad uh, system of sexual education. Yeah. Um, our sexual education is mostly preventative for STDs and pregnancy, mm-hmm. and it has nothing to do with consent. In, in mm-hmm. terms of, other than maybe like the term that I think I heard the most is "no means no," but like we're saying. Sometimes somebody can say no non-verbally or want to say no or feel forced into a situation. Or not be or not fully want to, coherent. And yeah, or not, not be fully coherent, you know, or there's, yeah, there's so, so many I'll different say, things. I'll say know? this about, about, uh, about being drunk and the nature of that. Like, I didn't, I didn't learn, and I had, there were so many times that I had uh, sex ed in school. Like, I would bring it up to my mom and she'd be like, I didn't know you were talking about that yet. Like, there were so many times that I right. had it. So, like, that it's crazy. But it never, I didn't know, I didn't know that blackout drunk meant that I could be talking to someone and have no understanding that I even yeah. did that. I didn't, right. I didn't know, I didn't know what that was until I experienced it myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I had no understanding of that yeah. as a thing. And, and And you were saying, I think you were saying earlier off mic, like, you were surprised at how many people didn't notice that you yeah, were so and, drunk and that, that the next morning you couldn't remember what had I happened. I couldn't remember conversations yeah. that I had with people. And I think that like stuff like that is like, it's all, it's, it's all over this case where they'll be like, she was fine, she wasn't drunk, she blah, 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 blah. But like, sometimes I've been, you, But they sometimes could not you have known. Know, they, yeah, they could the, easily not have perceived that. Yeah. Well, and do we know if they were intoxicated? Because also that... Right. Uh, uh, we... They, I, I think they claim that they were not, yeah. that they were not drinking, and they never saw her drink. She says that she was drinking earlier in the night with another person mm-hmm. that she was on a date with. She said she had four to five drinks. That guy creeped her out. She left and then met up with Nate and his friend and I think and somebody else, and then they went back to his place. The other thing, I mean, this is... I, uh, this is I don't know if this is even worth saying, but yeah. I, I was also wondering if... It could have she could have been drugged as well, not by these two men, but by somebody else, the guy that she was with, I, and they also potentially did not realize that. I and, and this is where it's it's so hard because it's not a, it's a perfect Venn diagram of crap. Yeah, because, it's awful. Mm-hmm. Because when you look at it, is like culturally we don't talk about drinking and sexual encounters. Right. We don't talk about the fact that like. Uh, getting roofied happens like I've been roofied it was horrifying it was my first year living in New York it was like luckily a friend and I shared a drink and as a result we both were like half not well (laughs) yeah Yeah. like we both like if we hadn't we like either I would be passed out or she would be passed out and instead we were just sitting on the pavement like wanting to vomit and that like that was like great for us uh and not not great that's the wrong word for sure but like it led to us being able to go home and be safe in our own beds but when all said and done it's so murky because on top of that it if these were two white guys again it's like well, there's part of me who, as a woman, is cynical of the justice system because, like, well, they don't believe women. They don't believe women in rape cases anyway. Right. Yeah. Like, there's, yeah. like, just, like, like other systemic now, oppression. Like, women just aren't believed. And, and, yet, and then there's the other side, too, right, of we believe that uh, black people are more harshly convicted, more harshly, or they're also not believed in the justice system. And the fact of the matter is the police in this case did believe the victim wholeheartedly, and so did the state when they prosecuted. It was the jury that 
decided they didn't be- they believed Nate and didn't believe this other guy. Would this case be different if this was a black woman instead of a white one? I think it I think it would in terms of there would be less historical implications. For me, it would be different. I, I don't, in terms of her, it wouldn't. It's not, it doesn't matter at no, all. I'm just talking about the way like the case would be perceived. Only I only ask that because possibly in in the terms of the jury, you're saying yeah, absolutely. Just, I think it. I think it. I think that people would, no matter how unbiased we believe we are, those kinds of interworkings are always at play. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean this 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 whole situation. I mean it's a terrible situation. Yeah, I mean, uh, what, like literally, no matter no matter what happened, this situation was so bad that this woman took her own life. I mean, like that is. Well, we have to assume that it was probably also uh, other, other things, things in her life. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. I mean, though she though she did attempt to take her life very soon after this had happened, and that was also because of the harassment which did happen, and that was caused by Nate. And his friend because they, they put her name all over the, the school. Like the, I think I'm reading right now. They exposed who she was, and they called her, and then they had other people call her. Yeah, at harassing her. See, that's the part that makes that. me go that like, uh, as an intersectional human on this planet, I'm I'm so mad for so many different reasons because I was like, way to use your male privilege to shame a woman, right? So publicly, yeah, and then like, and. And so, like, there's part of me, well, as a woman, why would you, like, I have to ask, I was like, why would you do that if you were truly innocent, knowing that you are, there's a level of power along the lines of gender that you are, like, controlling by well, by trying to humiliate yeah. a woman uh, who clearly was going through... Right, exactly. Like, he didn't have. He definitely didn't have empathy at the time, and I think he he acknowledges that. Whatever, seventeen but years later. But I, I mean, then there's a part of me who was like, "Well, there's a dead girl, and even if you're a small piece of that, you're a piece of that." Right. So because I mean, someone else had to step in, like the women's law. Was it women's law project sued Penn State because of the fact that they said her name? Because that's it. I mean, just in case people don't know, when it comes to these type of cases, that they tried we. The law makes sure that the accuser's name is not public record. Right. Um, unless she or he decides to come out with it. So, like, the fact that they just did that alone is... Yeah, it, and Penn State settled. <laughs> um, they, yeah, I, it's, 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 a not, it's not a good situation. And I think it does... The one positive thing that can come out of it is that it brings to light... Oh, how many more conversations we need to have about rape culture, about consent, about mm-hmm. sex and, you know, sex around alcohol or drugs or whatever. And alcohol substances. in general. Yeah. And people, and yeah. I think, and I think it is important for everyone to educate themselves and to, and, um, to be mindful of these things because I, I do believe I don't, I can't speak to whether or not, like these people, these two men were guilty. I think either way, I, I can a hundred percent for sure say they were not mindful of things that were happening. Well, the thing is, you know what I mean? I can a hundred percent say they were inappropriate in harassing. Uh Well, uh, 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 like, like the thing that they are a hundred percent guilty of is harassing someone who, uh, was vulnerable. Right. Because as a woman, uh, just the power structures that be, she is more vulnerable in society around uh, sexual harassment. And the fact that they did that, even taking the rape case out of it, which is hard to do, but like just that context, it's shame on them. That's yeah. disgusting. Yeah. And all three parties, and like, and all three parties weren't on the same page because of the aftermath is what it is, yeah. is, is what yeah. it came to be. Yes. You know, like they, they, didn't know what was going on. That's what they I'm saying. They, they, yeah, were, no, they, they, they were not mindful They thought of they knew happening. what was going on, but they didn't know. Well, yeah, like, and I think it's the thing, like, now, and I, I'm not going to lie, I didn't really know too much about what rape culture until, until I started working at MTV in politics. And it's like, there's so many things that men do amongst themselves yep. that perpetuate stereotypes. Like, I just, like, and again, this is, there's so many things that I feel like guys do. Just talking about, like, um, 
what they would do to a woman. Like, I mean, we we clearly know the Trump tapes that came out and like the disgusting things he said. But even even things that men don't even consider as a big deal. Like, I, I read this whole article just about whether or not you agree with it or not. But just what when men say. I don't like her no more because she put me in the friend zone. What yeah. that actually means, yeah. you know, and like, and, and yeah, and I, yeah. What that I just, I, I, I don't like saying the term that what that actually means, as opposed to what that what that implies and what that can imply. Like sometimes I think people use that term; they're not using it intentionally to say, "I don't like if she's not giving me sex." You know what I mean? But, but like, the whole, but the whole point, at least again, like from what my sister said, is like the whole point sometimes is that people don't even know what they're saying and like right, these things. Yeah, are but like are they don't perpetuating. they don't understand the yeah. the history. The they don't understand how these people are, uh, how other people have used these phrases. It's the same yeah. thing with race and stuff like that. It's what we're trying to uh, educate. Did you have any of you? There's a. Netflix documentary on toxic masculinity and essentially what you're talking about is toxic masculinity and um, it's from the people who uh, they did misrepresentation same documentarians and one of the things they talk about is how that uh, toxic masculinity starts from a very early age when little boys are taught to act like men and anything feminine is disgusting and dangerous. And that's when internalized homophobia and sexism and misogyny starts. So it's like one of the things we have to do is like we have to maybe like it's so hard because how we get to here like we're putting a lot of band-aids when it's like we have to look at how we're just talking to kids of like be a man act like a girl smile ladies stop crying you know what i'm saying like i mean that's one of the things also like- also in the way that we view sexuality in movies yes. and things like that like oh it is like we think it is sexy when the man like all of a sudden turns around and grabs the woman and yeah. and then kisses her you yeah, know what i mean like I, oh he kissed oh i didn't ask for it and then he just grabbed me and kissed me and, and it's like too. you know it's easy to say that that's gross it's easy to it's easy to like sit back you know or uh, top our you know high chairs and be like yeah how could anybody do that and yet what the you freaking watch movies and celebrate movies in which that stuff happens all the time rebecca gilman wrote this play called um boy gets girl and it's about uh this guy who ends up stalking this woman (laughs) uh but but in the end they talk about how like it's in every movie that like the guy's supposed to just be, he's supposed to just be there. You know, he's supposed to be, you know, they, yeah. like, like they oh, run the into. Persistence, the yeah, per- oh, the persistence. Oh, well, he kept, and you just keep going. And, 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 wear and they, her down. They wear her down. I mean, and I've seen exa- that, but I've seen that quote unquote work in real life. I've seen, I've seen a guy go uh, uh, pursue a, a woman who did not want, who at first was like, I don't like this person. And then he kept pursuing, kept pursuing, kept pursuing. And then all of a sudden, now these people are a couple. Because, and I'm like, what the fuck? Because that's, yeah. that, that's that thin line of like, you know, Steve Urkel used to say it. And I remember I, I used to say it because Urkel used to say it, like when he used to talk to Laura, I'm going to weigh you down. That's what he used to say all the time. And it's that thin line of like, what is unwanted and what is courtship? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like unwanted advances or what is someone being courted? You know, it's like, and that is such a thing that like, do people even do that? Do people even court each other anymore? Nah. And like, what or do that people want to be courted? Exactly. Like, what does that even mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, but we before had to talk we go down this. a rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, that was uh, a long. This is a long cold open. Well, is, we knew it was going to be the beginning of the pack. Uh, <laughs> so, Real, well, it's you know. the. It, you could say it's the beginning, or you could also say that it's the birth oh, no. Stop it. of a nation. Mm. The whole point. Well, you didn't even have to say The it. birth of a nation. Uh. Play the music. You know what it Jonathan Raylock. James III. Drop Milligan. What more can I say? You know what it is? Like men can jump. Black man. Black X. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Black Man Can't Jump in Hollywood. Hollywood City. All right. James, uh, you're on your phone, dude? Yeah, what are you doing? I'm pulling up my notes. James, you missed James, your, you yeah, missed your cue, a, dude. There are no, they don't have, the slaves didn't really have guns. In so them. you do a make, drum or something? Do something. Okay, hold on, wait. Let's no, do it again. You late. already ruined it. Dude, wait, do it again, do it again. No, man. Welcome to Black Man Can't Jump in Hollywood. Hollywood City. Go down, Stop it. No. Moses. Are you serious? Who it 
down in Egypt's land and tell old Pharaoh, Guys. let my people go. When Pharaoh was in his place, <laughs> let, let my people go. go. Hey. Let, you know, no, 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 no. Go no. Let my people go. Why did you pick that? Why did you pick like? Yeah, I don't know. That was the about. first one I thought. I was in this play called Steal Away Home when I was in that's middle school. That's not even. A, and that's one of the songs that they but sang. But why did you pick like a? All right, I'm Jonathan Braylock. <laughs> I'm Gerard Milligan. I'm James the Third. In oh. the. In, <laughs> Uh, you've already heard her voice, or maybe you didn't because you skipped that for opening. You're like, I don't want to listen to this at all. I want to hear about the movie. Uh, we have an amazing guest. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. I got new drums. I got new drums. Wait for it, wait for it. You get the special drums. Oh, look at his new drums. Wow. Wait, wait, stop, 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 stop. Keisha Zala. <laughs> What's up, Keisha? Uh, Keisha, how special do you feel those drums were? Uh, it, I don't know. It felt like some like electronica you were going for in your I mouth. Mean, you know, you uh, gotta, you gotta I'll take it. it. I'll take it. Those drums felt special. For the listener, enough. Keisha was grimacing the <laughs> entire time. <laughs> also, those sounded exactly like all the other whoa, drums. Whoa, did you hear the end though? Boop. That's yeah. how you end it every Boop. time. No, no. And the other one's like. Da, 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 da. No, you don't. Uh, <laughs> Just so you know, Keisha is a part of the wonderful group that we perform with called Astronomy Club. Yes, she is. Astronomy uh, Club. Amazing improviser, actor, comedian, also currently on the HBO, HBO show. HBO show. Episodes coming up of uh, Divorce. Yes. yes. Divorce. Keisha was also the first um, uh, improviser of color I saw when I moved to New York. Ah. Oh, you know, you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Question mark. Yeah, Doppelganger was the first. Y'all were the first people I ever saw. Yeah. Oh, snap. You okay. Uh, All right. Okay. So, yeah, we're here to review The Birth of a Nation. Listen, I want to say this before John finishes. I know I said I wasn't going to watch this movie, okay? And no. I didn't want to watch this movie. Nobody cares. The people care, people John. Ca- I honestly think people do care. The okay. people care. All right. And I felt like I had to watch the movie because it, if I didn't watch this movie, if I tried to make John watch, I don't know, something else, he would bring up, I don't need to watch it because you didn't watch Birth of a Nation. So yeah. I had to watch this movie just to make sure that John Braylock would never get out of another movie I'll ever. say this too, because I, I, I said this a lot don't off you, camera. Don't you sit there <laughs> so proud like I said that. I mean, yeah. I'm saying okay. this off, off mic, not camera. We're not, this is being filmed. But um, I was kind of hoping that Gerard wasn't going to watch it. Like, I was kind of hoping we were going to get here and I was going to be like, I didn't see it. <laughs> 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 we were just going to have a discussion about it if, the whole time. So, if I didn't see it he Keisha, wouldn't have I seen it. I, um, I enjoyed watching it with Gerard just to look at his face. Like, I could uh, see him dying oh, during wow. cer- was, certain sequences. Okay, like, oh, yeah. well, let's, let's get, let's get Ooh, to it. Let's baby. set it up. You know, <sighs> this film uh, was wide released uh, uh, just a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, however, it premiered at Sundance early this year in January. Uh, it uh, now currently holds a record for the uh, most money ever spent on the like securing of rights for a film, $17.5 million, yep. I believe. Yep, you're right. The film costs, uh, I mean, the figures vary. I've The most reliable one I see is $10 million yeah, okay. to make. Um, currently, right now, at the box office, it opened. It's opening weekend, like $7.5 million. Yeah. The next weekend, it's dropped. The reviews are actually not as great as the ones at Sun- Sundance. So here's the thing is that Nate Parker put his... Uh, acting career on hold told his agents i was n- i'm not going to do another movie until i am able to play nat turner on screen he used a hundred thousand dollars of his own money to help finance the film got backers uh you know s- s- got all this money directed it wrote it produced it uh along with his friend uh, who also wrote it and helped him produce it um gabriel union is in it uh Gabriel Union, uh, uh, oh my, what, what is what's his name? Her, uh, uh, Coleman Domingo. Jackie, oh, yeah. Jackie Earl. Uh, Jackie name? Earl Haley. Yep. Mm-hmm. What's um, the woman's name? Arnie from? Hammer. It's the white dude. And what's the name of, what's, who's his wife? She's on um, the Viola Davis show, uh, uh, How to Get Away with Murder. Aja Naomi King. Yeah. Oh, Penelope go. and Penelope Ann Miller. That's so, the, yeah, the film is n- not doing so well. The back of it has a lot of uh, Oscar hopeful potential though uh, as we kind of briefly discussed 
briefly. Uh, in the beginning, this may, there's a dark cloud over the film now because of Nate Parker's 1999 case. Uh, the other thing, oh yeah, at, when it premiered at Sundance, it won the Grand Jury Prize for Best Drama Film, I believe. Uh, and it also apparently got like a standing ovation, a five minutes, a standing five ovation. minute standing ovation, which, um, with some people have said, and this is not to take away from the movie. Um, one of the, there's a saying that one of the reasons why it got such a long standing ovation, because Nate Parker was able to get a lot of his backers into the screening. So it's like, basically like what that means, like you had all these people who were like in the movie, people who backed the movie, who were excited to see their movie premiere at Sundance, yeah. which gave it such an uproar that it. I mean, it, they said it was like a five-minute to seven-minute right. break and just like claps and cheers. Right. Uh, uh, cool. So there you go. It's all laid out. Uh, You're so mad. I'm not. No, I'm not, to, I'm not mad. Let's not do mad. initial thoughts. Uh, Guess, Keisha, you want to go first? Yeah, Keisha. Of the movie, initial thoughts? Yeah, just yeah. how you felt when you first watched this thing. I don't know. It made me very tired as a black woman. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh. The lens of slavery is so interesting to me because I feel like it keeps being presented the same way in Hollywood. And I feel like uh, in that way of like, feel bad and let all your guilt be resolved through this movie. And I feel like this movie uh, did that as well. And in addition, um, uh, and when I just after I saw the movie off mic, I talked to draw about it. But this idea of like, It'd be nice to see black women with, I don't know, agency as slaves. Oh, just how about a couple of lines? <laughs> or like black oh, women some, as a, yeah, a part a, in the movie. A, a, <laughs> agency. Like it's it's hard enough, like we don't like the Bechdel test didn't even like come into consideration for any of the black women. I was actually that. wondering that. Like, do nope. well no no? The, doesn't it have to just be isn't the Beck Bechdel test as simple as two women talking to each other about something that's not a man? Well that, yes. Yes. So, and that's so doesn't not the mother doesn't the mother or and the grandmother talk to each other at one point? When about no, but the about scene, but the but but the scene after the after the the father runs away. But I don't think it's just a scene. It has to be it, it, the rule. It, I the, think it the is rule that is it has simple, to be though. two women. It's a it's a time lapse too, but it has two women in a scene talking about yeah, anything, anything but a man, anything but uh or man or something a plot line in a relationship, relationship yeah. to to a man. So it has yeah. to be. Totally their own age. The weather. Well, to me, like that was all they talked. About. Like all they talked about was like because every time I saw them, it was like it was talking about uh, Nat or the scene right after the dad was like, did they even say anything anything to each other? I think she was just like, don't child. Yeah, I mean, like she was telling her to like calm down. Like they were always together. But Listen, I, don't I think know they I'm were fighting for scraps. I'm, all, I'm always out here fighting for like the, the, the smallest of scraps. No, but like he has a good point. Like we watched it. And yeah, it was like, there are a lot women. of women. There were a lot of women characters in the movie, but bit parts. Bit. They parts. were smaller. Like, like I mean, the mother it, and the and the wife had. It was all in service, over. though, of other characters. Yeah. And what's so hard is, as a black woman, I feel like so much like. I can talk about just the lady side of it that like so many female characters are in service of black, of, like of, of men. And then as a black woman, like there's part of me who's like, I see misogyny and I see misogynoir, like just even in the way, like the black female bodies were portrayed, uh, that I like question in, in the sense of like, it was, I still saw elements of the like male gaze. Mm -hmm. I still saw elements of women being portrayed as objects of desire for men to consume. Yeah. And like that that bothered me because like I as a black person, I want more black movies. Love that. However, as a black woman, I want more movies where like black women also have agency that's not entire like hint like hint, uh, totally comprised of their male counterparts. Right. So I don't feel like that movie succeeded in that way, that the women, most of their identity had to do with caring for men, thinking about men, protecting men. Uh, and the mo and the two or three moments we had sans that it, they were still, the power of the male characters were still very much so felt. As if yeah. slavery yeah. didn't I mean, impact 
black women. Gabrielle Union's character gets married and then she gets raped. That's it, right? Yes. Like she doesn't do anything else, right? I mean, right? Yes. She dances. Uh, In at her wedding, she gets she dances. Yeah, she at was her a wedding. minor. She was a very minor character. She chose not to have her character talk. It was one thing she said. She felt like her character. Uh, I forgot what the reason she gave. But. She wanted to represent the. Uh, you know, the decades and decades and hundreds and years of uh, black women who have been silenced. She wanted to represent that on screen. She wanted to show the pain, the silent, the uh, pain that happens. It's like symbolically, you don't see her speak. You just see her go through this very painful moment. And like, that's how, And but that that pain is like kind of, you know, ignored. So that's that's so it, it, it was it, wasn't it was a, given, it was similarism. It wasn't given its proportion, if that's it, like, because I understand that from like a creative choice and from like an actor choice, I think there's a lot of weight in silence. However, I think in the scope of the movie, it wasn't given the cinematic weight because, that it deserved. Yeah, Cause she cause, didn't deal with it. Because uh, I mean, well, I feel like yeah, if it, let's let's uh, let's keep going with the initial thoughts and circle back to that conversation because okay. that's later on. Y'all want me to go somewhere else? Yeah, 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 sure. Um, all right. Uh, so yeah, I felt I felt similarly about the 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 female characters in it. There was a moment when I wrote just the women characters are not in this movie. It's one of my notes. Um, when it got to the revolution, when it got to the rebellion, I mean, uh, that was very satisfying for me. Like I couldn't wait to see white people getting just <laughs> people saw it. Cheered no, like re- like really like like. You messed in, up, man. In a, in a way, no, re, like in a way that I was surprised, <laughs> like be, because there was so much of the movie that I was just like, all right, I can't, I can't do it. But then, like, there's one shot where like a sledgehammer goes down on a dude's head, and I was just like, yes, <laughs> like I was just like, that's what I want. Black and, people were high fiving in the theater. And, the and the thing is, throughout yeah. the movie, I kept thinking about, uh, and I think I brought this up a couple <laughs> times, but definitely when we talked about it. <laughs> um, Definitely when we talked about it on the podcast, but I kept thinking about uh, uh, DiCaprio's monologue in Django where he's like, how come they don't kill us? Because uh, let's take a look at their skulls. They're idiots. You know, like, and he goes to that whole thing. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, like, there are just, there's a lot of, like, um, there's a lot of, like, nice visuals, like, where we're, like, we see, like, Roger Smith, like, cutting the dude's uh, beard, and you're just like, he could kill him right you know what i mean like they like slow down on it and like focus on that and and like you sort of like the way they show it building up for for nat like i don't know like i that that part of the movie was very satisfying for me and i and and it and it for me it made me think about like what's going on today and like how like sometimes we have riots and stuff and sometimes we have protests but like uh but how like it 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 takes like just deciding enough is enough when it comes to, to some of these things, you know. And it was it was uh, satisfying for me to see on screen. Um, what else do I want to say? It, I, I, the movie itself, though, it feel it it. I could tell that they were taking a lot of liberties. There was a there was a <laughs> there was a point like midway through where I was just like, what was the real story? Like what <laughs> really happened? You know, uh, uh, it, that seems clear. And I, and I don't know if I necessarily have any issues with the artistic liberties that were that were taken. I don't I don't I do not like uh that there that it kind of seems like they um were writing there were like all these moments where they're writing the slave owner characters, like his slave owners as like, oh they're you know, they're the good ones. They always do that in the, and it was just like and I, there were so many times where it seemed like that was the message they were trying to show or like, you know, like the wife, we kept seeing like the wife character, like just very silent and stoic, which sort of like shows like, you know, the woman had no agency, but maybe inside she wanted it to be, to be done. But it's just like, I don't know, like that doesn't, that doesn't make me feel better for these people. It makes me feel like these people are worse, you know? So yeah. Right. That's it. I don't think, yeah. Um, okay. So for me, it's so complicated because these films are complicated. I have to say, though, the overall feeling that I felt when I left was like, <sighs> I didn't need to see another slave movie. And and I I was disappointed in this movie. 
And I think it's because I thought it was going to be different. I actually, I don't have the same feeling as you, James. I, I wasn't satisfied yeah. with the rebellion. I thought the rebellion was like very short. It I definitely thought, was. I thought that the movie, I thought that this was what that mo- this movie was going to be about. And it was like, not really about that. Yeah. It, it really didn't feel like it was about it. And it, and at the same time, it also didn't feel like a Nate, a Nat Turner biopic. Nope. You know, it, uh, and and I actually feel like this movie was very conventional at times in ways that we see slave movies, which is it had all of the tropes. It had the slave masters who were kinder, and then a death happens, and then things aren't uh, the same anymore because the nice guy died. It had the journey to another plantation where a slave master isn't kind and he's completely brutal to the thing. It has the whipping scene. It has the rape scene. It has, you know, a lot of these images that we've seen time and time again. And for me, in terms of all slave movies, here's the thing is for me is like as a, as a, once you see one movie about slavery, once you see the brutality of slavery depicted on screen, you you really don't need to see it again because you get it. <laughs> and and the thing is, it's like, you know, even apart from like whatever oh, white guilt and trying to, you know, f- make people feel better, blah, blah, blah. To me, it's just like, I don't care if we recognize it and can sit in the theater and say, this is wrong. It's dehumanizing to see black people treat it like they are property. Uh, it just is for me at least I I, I see it and I'm like and I'm constantly reminded of it and but it also in terms of the racism that we face today I feel like yes it's good to remind people this is like this is how deep it was but I don't think people make the connection of this is how deep it was and that's why things are still messed up now and we gotta fix them I think people go yeah I, can I, you um, can you see how far we've come? Like, that's not what we don't do that anymore at all. Nobody feels that way. Well, isn't I mean, I I was writing something down because I was like, I can't forget it. Right. But isn't it like part of the disconnect? And I feel like why people ke- this is just my thought on why people keep making slave movies is that they want I think people want white people to understand how inhumane this was and to hopefully see themselves in it but i don't think these movies accomplish that i think they accomplish the idea of like (laughs) well i thought about slavery not racist and like yeah Yeah, i'm not right i'm not like those white guys on the screen and the thing is also they made all of the they made most of the white people in this movie like the majority of them like uh, like freaking hillbilly like They looked like, and maybe they were, I don't know, but they looked like villains. They looked like hillbillies. They looked like, like scum. They didn't look like normal people to me. They looked like villains. It was like the movie made sure that you knew like, these are the bad guys. Well, they are villains. And that was my biggest problem. I know they're villains, but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is if you make them, if, if it, if you paint them like blah, 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 and instead of showing, here's what, here's what I'll say. And this is the last point I'll make for my, the one of the most powerful scenes to me because uh, there were some powerful moments in the movie for me. One of the most powerful scenes was showing the little white girl skipping, Ugh. holding a rope, and you follow the rope, and the rope is connected to a little black girl who has this rope around her neck. And they're both smiling, and they're both skipping, but the little white girl is is clearly has this rope like that's her pet. And I was like, holy, how chilling is that? That this little girl and this little girl are laughing and playing and they're ha- they're, this is a human moment and yet we can see the dehumanization of another human being happening. That to me is way more powerful than seeing somebody get whipped again and again and again. I, you know what I mean? That's what, and I was like, anyway, I wish there was more rebellion. I, I wasn't really satisfied. I was kind of disappointed. That being said, you know, there are things that are great to discuss, but yeah, that was my initial thoughts. Uh, I didn't like this movie. <laughs> I actually am going to say it in the comments way. Fuck this movie. <laughs> if there's another movie coming out like this next year, fuck that movie. <laughs> it's like, I am tired. Like, the thing is for me, it's like, 
I'm tired of seeing black bodies victimized. I'm tired of seeing, like the thing is like, it was hard for me watching this movie, separating this movie from what I just see on the news. It's like how many, like how many images do we see of beating down black people? Like today, it's like there hasn't been a movie. I mean, Selma was like what two years ago didn't didn't you know lead actor didn't get an Oscar nomination, right? It's like this movie probably will get something. You know what I'm saying? And it's like what the last time we had a black person get nominated for an Oscar? What was it for? A slave movie. It's like I turn on the news. There's people like. There's, there's, there's police, and again, we understand there's good police. Oh, man, I like, just remembered that there were two years in which actors <laughs> were all white. Like, it's just, it's like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and like, if something oh, happened... I literally, when movie, you said that, I was like, what are you talking about? The last one, oh, right, all, th th for the past two years, all ten acting nominees have been white. Okay, continue. No, but the first, the first movie of 2016 in the Oscar race, people say, oh, this is a sure in for some type of like Oscar nomination. Was this slave movie, right? How, like, my thing is, like, and, and the thing is, you know what? I, I, I am a person who grew up in a black area, and like we study black history. I don't mind things not being based off of, uh, uh, I know these, these based off of true story things, and like sometimes they take these liberties. Yeah, half they of have this movie, to, they have to. But half of this movie, to me, feel like it didn't need it. Like I didn't need to see you put two women in a situation where they are beaten and raped when it wasn't a part of the actual story, or at least the historic part of it that we know of. Like, are you telling me to get these men to want to fight back to, to affect them, you have to break the women in their lives? I mean, it's the girl in a refrigerator trope it, like it is. from comic books. It's like, throw them in a refrigerator. Oh, women are in trouble. Like, it's, it's the use of female sexuality and quote-unquote weakness to inspire men to act like men. And uh, whether it is the story of white women or black women that is still like a part of like the misogyny and the misogynoir that I have, I find problematic in this movie. I mean, not only that, but like after some of these things which we're gonna get to, the people who discuss what happens to the women are the men in the movie. Mm -hmm. And first off, you know what? This movie not only does something that pisses me off to such an extent, this movie again, like John says, the rebellion, which you're like, the whole movie is supposed to be about like Nat Turner's rebellion. Nat Turner was considered I mean, whatever. Nat Turner was considered the black William Wallace, okay? Nat Turner fucked up a lot of white people, all right? Like, he- Historically he, killed uh, approximately 60 to 65. That's but, what but, they think. But the, but, oh, but the, the group, sorry, not the, him yeah. specifically. But it's like, this dude cast this rebellion, which, and the movie does address it in one of the, the, the epilogue lines at the end, is like, because of this, this minor act in the grand scheme of things, so much- like happened afterwards to African Americans, like just approximately just, 200 to 300 black people I, killed. In I, just, I feel you. Like you could have like started the movie with the rebellion, same here, and moved forward to the or, actual birth of a nation. Or <laughs> <laughs> so okay, let's start. Let's let's begin where this movie starts. This movie starts uh, with uh, uh, is it the symbolic dream with him? The, the, it's, the, it's it's the younger. So it's version a younger of version of him. It, there, it's in like African garb. Mm -hmm. There are, uh, there. It's like in Africa. It's kind of oh, a dream sequence. Sorry, sorry. Before we even get to that, is, mm -hmm. is his mom taking him as a child because he has the three marks to to the the shaman? Now, like, where the flip were they though? Was I that really? I couldn't understand if this if was, was real was, because yeah. they weren't in Africa. No, that looked like it was here, but, but it, it was looked like, like it was. Right, like yeah. they were all like Absolutely. I was like they had paint. They got they have the paint on them. There there's mm -hmm. drums and there's they're in a clearly in a forest of some sort. Yeah. So it was it was unclear to me if that was one if it was real or two if it was either in Africa or America. But yes, basically this tribal ritual thing is happening, and the, this little boy has three birth marks on him, uh, and and they're saying this means that he's a leader. Mm -hmm. and they they name what what each three meant. I yeah. forgot what it was, but you should listen to him. But basically, we and should the listen women to him. He's with the leader. Be breast bound. Yeah, yeah, they were breast bound. Uh, yes, yes. Just saying. You know, well, you know, it's, it's 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 interesting too when we do these historical films. It's like these women were clearly having conversations, and yet the points in which most movies choose to focus on are points in which sometimes the women would have would women would have been silent. That does not mean though that they can't have a show the conversations that the women were clearly having in private or behind like closed doors as it were uh anyway this so we 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 see that right um 
and then uh, then we're like it's like 18 oh 1800 1806 or something like that like, you I know the date 18 oh yeah whatever and we're at this plantation we're introduced to to nat uh, as a boy again he's still a little boy uh we're seeing like the happenings of the plantation uh one of the things that was very striking to me was you saw Nat with Sam, this little white boy who was, I guess, the son, the son of, of the slave the, master. Yep. Just, just a side note: in real life, Sam Turner was the brother oh. of the slave master who formerly who owned Nat, ah. not his son. Oh. Mm-hmm. Interesting change. Here's why it's a really interesting change: is because the movie kind of sets up almost in this way in this opening scene that Nat and Sam are friends. Yeah, they're yeah. playing. They're playing uh, hide, hide and, and seek. seek baby. Hide they're and playing hide seek. and seek, and Sam like mentions, "Oh, Nat, you're always, you always beat me. Yeah, you always beat me at hiding. All right, come on, come on out. You always beat me." He comes out. They're laughing. Sam gets called back into the house. Nat sees a little book. Is it safe to assume that Sam is the one who taught Nat how to read? Oh no, no, no. I think. I, I think, think it was he, very clear that the mother did, right? But, or or oh, that he no, magically that he could, learned. Yeah, he the, could that just That was do so it. foggy. Oh, so yeah. he's already a magic he Negro just, in the first 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. this movie. I'm going to tell oh, you this Oh, you're right. right I guess Sam could... Because who... How else whoa, 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 wait. Before we say at this movie, though, I will... We do have to... Uh, Nat... There is a magical element to Nat Turner, though, because they said the, there is a legend that he knew things... He knew things that happened before he was born. They said many times people have said in his life when he was a boy, you're going to go, you're special, you're a prophet. God has a calling on your life. They called him a prophet. They called him a prophet and he had all those dreams. (laughs) And he said, yeah, and he had dreams. No, I'm just saying. But this is his historic, this is part of his history. Uh, That being said, they didn't show any of that stuff, really. They didn't show people calling him a prophet. prophet. They showed... The fact that he learned how to read, who knows how, I guess, maybe it was Sam, I don't know. But then the mother was like, I'm going to teach him how to read. The Bible. The Bible. She comes, she's like, brings him into this room. There's all these books. He tries to grab a book. He's like, no, 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 that's for white people. You wouldn't, your kind wouldn't understand that. But here's the Bible. And so the, Nat learns how to read the Bible. Uh, uh, before that happens, though, uh, before that happens, though, his dad... Or right after, I think. Yeah. No, no, it's after that. Yeah, before. The, oh no, before, it is. No, sorry, no, no, no. Be, sorry. It was his dad. His the thing with his dad happens after you see him play with Sam, but before. But before the, the mom, reading thing. Before, but before the, yes. the but before he goes on to, t- to teach the. Because at that point, oh. the reason his mom is so sad because the you know we talk about it that yeah. But yeah, but but so but but before that happens, his dad uh, is caught stealing food, kills a slaver, and then runs away. Because his dad, because the kids all eat. They were trying to eat. Was it porridge? What were they trying to eat? They, it looked like grits. Yeah. My brain went. Uh, it looks like, like porridge. Cheese, like grits. cheese grits. Yeah, yeah, porridge or grits. Yeah, and like um, Nat, Nat, there Nat was enough food any. for all of them. And Nat the, didn't get any. The, and the, and the there's that slaver on the road. So they introduce who, a. They introduce. I guess the <laughs> the movie's main villain. Yeah. Is, this slaver with like it's the guy who plays it's um, Rorschach. 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 Rorschach in, in and he's also the new Freddy. He, uh, he was the new Freddy. That but was also, let's remember that this dad though, because I feel like um, this is where you brush his name. James, do you remember his name? I know he was no, in. I his he name. was in the movie um, 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 Beast of the Southern Wild. He was the father. Oh, of oh word. Word. yes, word. he was. Great actor. Yeah. So he was. Yeah. And, and again, that guy wasn't a traditionally trained actor. He happened. They to be found in him. Wow. And they found yeah. Him. Um, yeah. So yeah. So he kills the slave owner, comes back, or Nat was there. Nat saw it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he grabs Nat. He runs away. The, they're they're kind of chasing him. He gets back to the plantation. He tells he he drops the food, gives him the food, and he's like, "I gotta go. They I killed somebody." And then the, the you know his wife and his mother are kind of freaking out. They're, you know he tells Nat, "What does he say to him before he leaves?" Uh, he said, "Does he did he say take care of your mom?" Take care, take care of your mom. Yeah, he says like take care of your mom, and I think he says something leader. like you're yeah you're, you're a leader. The you're, you're the man of the house now. You're the leader now. Uh, <laughs> Yo, like, man, yeah. this, like this, this, this. The the, the the thing about this is like we 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 often review these movies. We talk about like magical Negroes and like like the exceptional. We always say that thing, the exceptional um, Negro. This movie, which was written by a black man, two black men, directed by a black man, somehow still plays into this trope of like. 
being the exceptional Negro. Yes, but but I think I think this is a it's Nat Turner. I think it's a Nat Turner thing. But they didn't make him a. Le- My thing is, if you're gonna build him to be a legend. Make him a legend. This movie doesn't do that to me. Yeah, no, no. I mean, like, like the movie, the movie, like, they put in, they tried, the movie tried to do everything. Can we make a Harriet Tubman movie? Like, wait, like, you're telling me, like, I mean, it's ridiculous that there is not a Harriet Tubman movie. Yeah, but Nat Turner didn't make, oh, sorry, but Nate Parker didn't make a a Harriet Tubman movie because he was like, there should be a Nat Turner movie. He was like, I'm about to star in this movie, and I'm about to, and I'm about to, and I'm about to, and I'm about to write all these moments for me to be fucking killed. You know what I mean? Like, he did that for himself. Exceptional. <laughs> the exceptional Negro is the one black man in a sea of white people who is who is good at stuff. I don't I don't know if this film was trying to say that Nat Turner was the only person who was exceptional. Right, I but think, he I is think, magical, which is I think what the issue. Well, to me, also to me, when I think of the exceptional one, yes, it is like the one black person amongst like uh, mostly Caucasians, but it is also the one black person amongst the others, the one the, yeah. the diamond in the rough. It's like. That if you looked at this 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 right. field of black people, that one right there is yeah. the special one. Yeah, I, and he definitely true. was like they definitely made it that he was. I'm tired of that shit, I, man. Well, but they did and they did it. Well, but I also think everything we've talked about thus far has not did not emotionally engage me enough to be like, why don't we start with it? Because if this actor wrote this movie for himself, start with him. In the damn movie. Yeah, no, that, yeah. That, that was Sorry. the craziest thing. So, for what me. do you? Yeah, how did uh, you guys feel? Like, because just so for the for the people who haven't seen this film and who who are never going to see it, uh, the all this stuff with him as a child is I feel like, like the first twenty minutes, yeah, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 25 minutes of the movie, minutes, twenty minutes yeah. maybe, maybe maybe it was shorter than I expect, but it felt longer. I remember going, oh wow, he's still a kid. <laughs> no, yeah, I remember like, oh he's oh he's still a kid. Oh, and he's still a kid. Um, and, it, and then and they it, jump to adulthood up. real quick because the yeah. guy the guy comes in and he's like he's like oh you are your father's there's a lot of things that happen right the 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 dad tells him you're a leader the the slave uh, catcher you know questions him and when he doesn't say anything he's like you are your father's son this guy's got a lip on him even though he didn't say anything and then and he looks at me again he's gonna get what yeah he's gonna get what's father. coming for him and then. We have him learning how to read the Bible, and 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 oh wow, he's really smart, and he knows how to read, and then he's learning how to read the Bible, and then we also see him, her saying, "I can't teach you anymore." Remember that happens yeah. too. It's like yeah. I can't teach yeah. you anymore. Mm-hmm. Didn't need any of that. It was like a lot of stuff that happened with the kid, and then fi- and it's like I can't teach you anymore. You're not allowed in this house anymore. I forgot what he did, and they're like he he didn't do anything. The guy the, the oh, it was husband, of the it was because of the slave. Well, the husband died. Remember the husband? Yeah. Died. Oh, that's yeah. what it was. And she said the she husband was like, died. His last one of his. We last need things, you. We need you in the. We field. need you in the field. Pick that cotton. And then you see him picking cotton, and then now he it's picks cotton Nate until Turner. He's a grown, until Nate Turner's for picking 25 cotton. Twenty five years he picks we, cotton. We could have started the there. Card, we could have. We could have started there. But I know. I think. I think they should have just made it shorter because like all these movies, like Ray and stuff like that. You all, like they always show the person when they was a kid to see what formed them. But I just want to touch on this cotton scene, and I hope my mom doesn't listen to the podcast that often. So I'm gonna bring this up. So my parents are older, right? My parents are from the south. My, my my mom grew up picking cotton, so I have been to cotton fields, and I'm just looking at like when you see Nat Turner like first grab one, right? His hands bleeding. Yes. Now, and this is I get that this is a movie. But I'm like, if you're going for accuracy here, like that shit hurts so much. You ain't just you ain't just putting your thumb in your mouth and just picking cotton like quick like this. And it, and I only bring I only bring that up because it's like if you're trying to show how hard and how tough this man's life is, this cot even even little things like picking cotton is rough. You know what I'm saying? Like if you look at like like the the hands of like older African Americans who grew up picking cotton, it is this calluses. It's yeah. a rough hand. Right. I think they are trying. I think they. that's what they feel like they did with him getting pricked and bleeding. Yeah. Uh, and I think they just didn't do it. They didn't. They, I, the movie is a series of not doing things enough or hard enough. Because he, he but, pricked uh, it. But you know right what I mean? Yeah. And but, I think it's because of the, they try to jam a lot of stuff into this movie. Yeah. Right. Like we were all just saying, do we? did we need all of that backstory? None yeah, of sure. which is. I mean, it's alleged that his father ran away. He wasn't present at the scene. But, like, do we need to see that? Do we need to see We could have started with one of his dreams, yes. one of his men, and, like, gone to the cotton field, and I would have been in it. And then next yeah. scene, see him preaching, and I would be like, all right, I get what he is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and you can do yeah. it in flashbacks. But, like, yeah, I get what you're saying. I mean, yeah. So, so, so basically we're up to the point now where, like, his father – the other th- yeah oh, exactly. you go ahead. No, no, you go no, ahead. no, I was going to say the other thing I didn't like about the showing of Sam 
and Nat being friends is because I, at first when I saw that, I was like, oh, snap, this is going to be heavy. Yeah. He's going to nope. become his master, and then there's going to be some, but they never, nope, he treated they him never like a referenced slave. the friendship ever. She did him like a slave. Yeah. She did him like a slave, and Nat treated they him like a master, do, and they do. never referenced, and I was like, well, then what was the point of that But they scene? do like little stuff, like Very little stuff, little, little stuff, that's frustrating to, to yeah. me, that, that like, uh, uh, where, like, you know, there's that scene where the guy he like picks up the toy that the that the kid yeah, dropped. and the guy and beats the guy's him. like beats him, and he stops him, for, and like all these things are like. But also, no, but, oh, but, time like, out, but time out. That doesn't have to be because of Nate was his friend. That could be because that's his prize. Slave. Exactly, but exact, his prize but, exa- but exa- exactly, I mean, I, I'm. Oh yeah, no, this, no I, no I do right. not it's like subtle. this. It's like right. this, it. And, and it's like we we look at it, and he's like, you know, he stands up for them. I got mad at myself in the movie theater because I was like, yeah, good, stand up for him. Wait a minute, fuck you! Like, it, like I that was be- my yeah. immediate that was my immediate reaction that I had right. when that happened, and it was like, Woo. every time I see one of these goddamn movies, and it's always the one supposedly like nice, and even in this movie, you know, we get to that point, but he's like this. Army Hammer's slave owner Sam make sure he know like everyone knows that he's supposed to be a good slave owner. Yeah. Normally they wouldn't let you go do this. Normally this yeah. wouldn't happen. It's like well, I don't, he's trying. He's he, he, doing he's that trying, to that. He's, he's is, trying to say that. But to what them. I'm saying is like this movie out of every person in the every, every white person yeah. in the movie is like Army Hammer and his mom are the least mean, the least like brutal. which is a real. I mean, and this is the thing. Even in the even when Nat Turner rebelled in real life. Uh, it was a point of discussion that they were like, how could he rebel? His slave masters were so kind to him. Yeah. That's how they felt. That's and, how white people felt then. And it's also, it's like, this is, this is the thing for people to understand. If you own a human being, they're going to want to be free. Well, and not only that, but you're not, you're not a good person. You're not good. You're uh, not uh, a uh, good person. Point. Oh, well, go also, well, I, I think what's hard is like, part of it is we're not addressing the difference of slavery. We didn't have European slavery. We had chattel slavery. That we own. We didn't own people like slavery, like you were an indentured servant. Because in Europe, you couldn't kill your slaves. You were still seen as a human. Right. Like we have to start. Like part of it is what makes American slavery so specific is we were things. Right, and they did that purposely, starting before. America was a, a country uh, because there was a there was a fear and there always was of uh, insurrection and to to quell that fear they made blacks less and less and less human to the point that the law then said a black person is my property so much so that the penalty for killing a slave was not because you killed a human being but because you destroyed somebody Seven else's property. And, yeah. and it, which meant you could kill your own slaves versus you look at the history of European slavery, like you couldn't kill slaves. You, you just like, because it's like, dude, you're killing a person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so we, see, we see Nat Turner. He's picking cotton. We, we, then we see, uh, you know, there's a very, a very beautiful image of him in the, in the barn. Uh, you know, he's got the horses or whatever behind him, and he's preaching. Uh, um, I don't really remember what that <laughs> sermon was about. You know, you just—it's establishing he's a preacher. Uh, we we have it set up that uh, you know, Sam's sister's getting married. You know, the house is being left alone. It's not doing so well. You know what I mean? Um, and, uh, Nat and Sam go out. I think this happens before he starts preaching, like. When he gets the the toy, yeah, it is. It's early. Yeah, the toy. Before, yeah. So we get to the scene where you know, oh, a, a white, a little white kid drops a toy when they're in town. You know, and Nat ter- picks it up and says, "Oh, Miss, your boy dropped this toy." The husband comes, beats, beats Nat. Sam's like, "Hey," you know, stands up for his slave, um, <laughs> and and then there's a slave auction that's happening. We see, you know, there's a slave that's overweight without an arm, without an arm, and it's like the thing. The thing that's so difficult about watching things like this, right, is that we all know these things exist. These are all things that, for the most part, we're supposed to get over, right? It's like, oh, slavery happened over 200 years ago. Get over it, right? And, like, we're looking at a disabled person being sold, right, for, like, what was it? Was it, like, 100 bucks? 
Like matter of fact, they went right. down. They, no, they went down. He was seventy five. Seventy five. Seventy five. Because mm-hmm. because nobody wanted to buy you know damaged goods. The guy was like, and the you guy said me. like, you know, I got to make a living here. Come on, you guys, I got to make a living. All that. All and that. the thing is, th- this it, it, I think people don't like. I feel like people like, like oh, th- like you guys said, like it was so long ago. Like, you know, we don't do that type of thing nowadays. So I feel like it's my opportunity to bring back, like, how this shit exists now, okay? When you think about, let's, let's take it back to the 90s. You think about, like, literally just the war on crime and drugs, right? Like, most of these, like, petty drug dealers, like, people who sold weed, people who sold, matter of fact, crack cocaine. People who sold crack cocaine got three times a higher sentence than people who sold cocaine, right? Which is cheap. People got slapped on the wrist. And the mere fact that that happens, now you have all these black and brown people who are now back to being slaves. This shit still exists right now. There are people right now who are criminals for whatever petty crime you may want to call so, it, right? Are you, uh, mad at, are you mad at society or are you mad at the movie? I'm, well, mad at, I'm mad at the fucking movie for making me remember how well, fucked well, up society you, is now. Well, do you know what movies I don't see enough of? Because it's like, we <laughs> see slave movies. <laughs> We see slave movies, but do you know what we don't see? Jim Crow movies. Yeah. And that's oh, where yeah. historically some of the worst violence that yeah. impacts us today. Good point. That my dad grew up in Jim Crow. Good he point. was he didn't he Remember the Titans. Yeah, like I mean, I would assume all of our parents mm-hmm. were impacted by Jim Crow, even if they were small children. Mm-hmm. Like Jim Crow movies, those aren't everywhere, and those were tons of lynching tons of people not getting jobs like we don't see those movies we get these antiquated slave movies but we don't get the realer oh see those cars and then uh they like the old timey cars and then they went and lynched a bunch of black people i can tell you why and i I can tell you why right now come to you because these movies right here these slave movies these people don't exist like these people like these people like they're so far removed they're not here and they made a jim Crow movie that's somebody's grandfather. I mean, we talked That's about this. Grandma. We talked about this uh, with uh, Tales from the Hood. There's that picture of like the girl laughing at the guy burn, and and we were like, she's alive. She's that girl alive is right alive now. right now. You know, like like yeah, like I, there's right. Uh, so sorry, I'm just trying to no. Go ahead, get, you got to do it. Do we it. we you know we see him. Oh, so what's the actress, the actress's name who plays the uh, his? Um, was, is that is that no? It's the I, wife. Uh, the wife. From, uh, how to give up a murder. Uh, sorry, I'm just. Is it uh, on? Uh, is her name Anjanu? Anjanu's the mom, right? No, Anjanu's the mom. Oh, Anjanu. who? Aja, by the way, Aja Naomi King. Aja Naomi King. She sees. He sees Aja Naomi King. She's like, she looks very obviously disheveled. Uh, I mean, I'm saying this because they they make it a point in the movie that she's like, she looks messed up. But yeah, but she and, got clean and, up. and you know, Nat sees all the white, you know, uh, auctioneers. Uh, you know, eyeing her, and he's literally gla- grabbing their genitals, grabbing their yes. genitals, licking their lips, and he's like, "Uh oh, she gonna get raped." And so he is like, "Hey, master, you should buy her," you know. And he's like, uh, "As a gift, you know." And they're like, "Ah, I don't know, whatever." He talks him into it. So Sam buys this woman, brings her home, gets her cleaned up nice. She looks really beautiful. Oh, she attacks, she him, attacks him, at him at first. She attacks him at first. She attacks him at first. Attacks that at first when he gets him home. And then the mother and the grandmother kind of take her in, clean her up, and then present her beautifully to his sister, which treats Nat, her uh, like Sam's a, sister. Treats her like she's a pet. Treats her like she's a present. Yeah. Like, she a, says, like, she a, says, a, like I got you a Game Boy. Yeah. And she says, oh, thank you so like, no, she's, always looks, just I, like Just what I always want. Just what like I that. always want it. That was also one of the most chilling moments in the movie. To for me, me, it was. I, to me, that was that scene and the and the and the and the little girl. I, that scene. It was, was the same scene. And it was I was back like, to back. That, that was back to back. Right? back. It, well, no, it no, no, no. That's back, later. But it was that's close. Later. But I, I, but it still was like I was like, see, but this is but this is the other thing I'm talking about. Like, we don't need to always see the brutal violence to show the freaking horrific mental games that people are yeah. put in. How, like you're a human being, and somebody's like, "Oh my God, thank you so much! You got me this gift." He's talking about you. I'm, you about, know? To sh- I'm about to let me show you where such and such is at. Let me come here. Let me just take you. I'm gonna put good clothes on yeah. you. Yeah, it's like this is like a grown ass doll, basically to this. Mm-hmm. Yo, mm-hmm. Uh, and and the whole time, she's silent and like as much. Uh, she be- she probably speaks ten lines in this movie. And that might be aside from the mom. That might be no. The she's longest. the yeah. She's the she's the like third biggest Her female mom. role. It's the it's the to mom be, and the grandma. I mean, I feel like know, right. I mean, who her. has who has 
more lines than her and the mom. The mom might have. Then the, the mom so then have. is it her? But the even mom, including it's men, the mom and then her and then and then. But including men. Oh too. well, no, and then no. Nate Parker. I mean, no. well, obviously Nate Parker. No, no, it's once, just Nate Parker. No, no, no. That, no, once it gets once it gets towards the movies he ramped up. Freaking the the uh, Nat's right hand man. He doesn't Coleman, have a lot. Coleman of lines. Domingo does not have a lot. He of starts lines. talking towards the end of that movie. I know he starts talking, yeah, but I'm just saying he doesn't have a lot of. If we're if we were comparing like screen time and line by and line specifically, I think that. But his he wife, he also has more agency. I agree. Oh, yeah, she is literally just there to it, have. It, it's right. not. It's my my whole point is it's agency. It's also agency and speaking lines. Like it's it's a perfect storm of like neither. Right. right. So like. The lines highlight how little agency she has. Right. I I don't think that she has that she doesn't have that many lines in this movie. I think she does. Because there's that scene. There's the scene with. uh, So they have a scene basically after this happens. After Nat Nat goes to his mom and his grandma and he's like, "Oh, thank you so much for cleaning her up," or "Thank you so much." They're like, "For what?" Like for making her look beautiful. And like, honey, she came into this world beautiful. Uh, And then we have the scene with him and her, and. I mean, this romance develops very quickly. <laughs> Basically, yeah. he already liked her from the auction block. They well, were... he saw her because she's an object to be conquered, right? And he decided that or object he to was... be rescued. Yeah, an object to be rescued for him, right? Not because she, <laughs> anyway. Like she shouldn't yeah. be sold to these white men, right? I want her, right? Yeah. No, uh, yeah. They can't have her. I, want I mean, her. and right. there's also Which, his, a history of wi- black women's bodies being up for auction for both black men and p- white men. So, like, I get upset because it's like, well, all right, I guess, I guess this is the bet, like, better, but you're still a thing. And it's like, of course, she should fall for him immediately. Like, they didn't give her a reason to fall for him. No, he was nice to her. That, that that's what it came down to. They definitely like, didn't give. Her reason to fall for him. They didn't give him a reason to fall for her other than her physical body. Um, and I mean, I guess we could say that the reason that she fell for him was because he was like a leader in the community of slaves. Uh, and he was pursuing her. I mean, really, that's that's stupid. There's, yeah. Yeah. No, that's stupid. That's the romance was. was not the romance was. I mean, did anybody feel we could have cut did, it out. Did anybody Completely. feel like the romance was affected them emotionally at all in any way? The, the only, no. Like, I mean, did no. any of those scenes? Did no, any of like those scenes when, speak like, to you? Like when they were when they were talking. When he steals, when they got married, when he steals the kiss. I don't feel anything. There, you know, there was one shot I did like though. Like I guess after they got married, and then because to me it's like I'm. Oh, I'm, when they were both naked. Yeah, because to me it's like that I actually wasn't that shot. I. I like it was. It's, to me. It's like especially when you see like how to get away with murder. I don't like you bringing this show up, but Viola Davis is a dark she's on woman. it. Yeah, I love Viola Davis. Uh, sorry, yes, and she's on it too. But it's like Viola Davis and her boyfriend on the show are both dark skinned black people, and they have sex. And to me, it's like it's a rarity in my life that I've seen two dark skinned bodies like seen in a sexual light together. Yeah, right. And it was done in like a moonlight. You did. You actually didn't see them have sex. It was just like they were kind of staring at each other. It was the, it was their wedding night. They're staring at each other. Moonlight's pouring in. You see them, you see them naked, like the tor- obviously just the torso. So you see her, all cast in shadow. All cast in shadow, but like very, very, ar- very artistically kind of captured. And then the camera kind of uh, zooms in on candles that are sitting in the window. And it's raining as it's raining outside, and it's like two candles melting together to you know show the symbols, the. Uh, the sim- symbolism. Two flames symbolism. symbolism. They're eternal. doing it. Of the eternal flame. <laughs> They're and saying then, it. So, yeah. And, I, and then the other thing, I mean, we might as well continue this storyline now, is that we see her, uh, you know, going to fetch some water. Some slave catchers come up. It's the same dude, you know, who threatened, you know, his, threatened, papa. His, threatened his papa, threatened him, you know, was chasing after his papa. You know, ask her for paper. She's like, "But this is the pro. This is my master's property. I don't. I don't need papers." And you're like, "Are you, you know, trying to be smart with me?" There are like four men around her. They close in on her. We cut away. We see Nat barge into Sam's room. I need a pass. I gotta go see my wife. She's been hurt. We go and we see her, and she's like brutal. Like I it, mean, it was reminiscent of the photo of Emmett Till. Yeah. Her, I her, think that was done on purpose, her, right? 
I mean, uh, it feels like feels it feels like it was connected to that. Her face is unrecognizable. Unrecognizable. Like. And at that point, she, yo, I, uh, my, I question why that was added into this. No, movie. I mean, and then why? And then, and then in the next, so here was the thing about it that really so, got me was like in the next moment when he goes in to talk to her when she finally wakes up, the shot is on him talking to her. Her face is like not in it at all, which we've already established her face. Because we've is, seen her face is, and it's brutal. We've seen it for a second. And it is brutal. It's tough to watch. But if the but in, in my opinion, right, if the if the if the reason that that you have this happen is because it's having a deep horrible effect on him, then let's also have a shot of her while she's while she's delivering this while she's saying this scripture to him or whatever you know, trying to talk to him, mm-hmm. you know we don't need to just see because then in the next in the, in like a scene or two later he gets whipped but we get to he gets all that FaceTime during that whip you know what I mean like, like right but we don't see yeah I mean yeah I think you could I think somebody could also argue that it would be gratuitous to continue to show her brutalized yeah face. I- I mean, uh, yeah, but if it's I, in there, I see that. And but yeah. like, then we, I feel like we skipped all over all the preaching where we see. We did, we did. I just, I was just carrying out her storyline. Yeah. So before this, before this rape has happened, um, uh, he has Sam, Sam Turner, and the local pastor has uh, they devised this plan for him to get more money by taking that and preaching to other slaves and on other plantations in the county because there is talks and fears of an insurrection, of a rebellion, you know, blacks rising up and killing their owners, uh, and, and also just slaves just not, you know, behaving properly. So they're like, maybe if your, you know, nigger preacher preaches to them, they'll behave better. And so we see, you know, kind of a little bit of a montage of him going around and preaching to other uh, plantation owners. They go to this one plantation where the people immediately you can tell this person is treating their slaves horrendously, wor- like you know, worse than all the other. The slaves. house is dark. It's like black wood that's yeah. made of the house. Um, and you know, they go in and they're like, "Oh, something's wrong with one of these slaves." You know, also like this guy threatens. He's like, "Listen, uh, I don't care who." he is if he says anything wrong steps out of line we'll kill him is that okay all right come on and then they go and they go into this like dark you know room there are two black men they have they're chained up they got mouth guards on them one is refusing to eat he's he is conducting a peaceful protest uh uh you know uh and uh so he's like oh man he's refusing to eat you won't eat okay they take off his mouth guard. They take a little, you know, pick and a hammer, and they just bust all of his teeth out. They literally destroy the entire man's teeth. His mouth is filled with blood and teeth, and then they oh. put a funnel and they shove the food down. It's one of the most horrendous and gr- gross, grotesque scenes. They're, yeah, they're in a small room in a bar. They're in a small room, and Nat and Sam Turner are both watching this. Uh, and then he has to go preach like immediately after this, and it to and. I will say, in terms of all the preaching scenes, this was the one that actually... This was the one, if if he was to get nominated for an Oscar, which I don't think he should, but if he was to get nominated for an Oscar... That's the scene. This is the scene. Yeah. He starts preaching, and he is he's preaching straight from the Bible, uh, you know, uh, talking about, you know, the, the, the righteous hand of God will be with you, you know, the oppressor will, okay. you know... God will d- slay your oppressors and all this stuff. Um, and he preaches with this passion that you see all of these slaves who were so dejected, so downcast, so beaten and broken. Their spirits are lifted. And at the end, they're like raising their hands, shouting That's hallelujah. So what, what I like about this scene, what I really like about this scene is we've seen several scenes of him preaching at this point, And he's been told like, specific scripture that he right that he has to deliver and it's right. all like obey your master and you'll be you know. right and just so if i can real quick real quick like because i am a christian and i and and i read the bible uh the, the 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 verses that they're talking about which are clearly definitely used in by slaves all the time slave owners all the time is i believe it's peter 
I think it's yeah, Peter. Yeah, Peter 2.18. Uh, and, and Peter is basically preaching to the Christians of that time zone because in the Roman period, their people were slaves. And he is saying, he is saying, preaching to everyone, do good and be good to people who are not being good to you, which also included slaves, just obey your masters, not just the ones that are good to you, but also the ones who are harsh to you, for that is the mission of Christ. The idea being when Jesus was on this earth, he was, you know, he is Lord over everything, and yet people persecuted him, beat him, put him on the cross. And when he was on the cross, he said, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. It is in no way justifying slavery. It's not saying slave, it, slavery is good or that people should be slaves. It's specifically speaking to people to be better than uh, the people who... Right, yeah, yeah. 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 And go ahead. No, I was going to say, I actually had the hardest time watching this personally, like because as somebody who doesn't necessarily identify as a Christian, I, it concerned me because the indoctrination of black people into using Christian, using the Bible to submit, like, right. and the number of times uh, Christianity has been, I feel like, used to manipulate black populations. Like, it really, be, that, that, like, I'm getting emotional because it became hard to watch because, for me, I saw all those scenes as a manipulation of the word to Absolutely. manipulate black identity and bodies. And I, like, there's part of me who still questions how much of that, that legacy still exists in the black culture. So I found that so hard to watch. Yeah. I, 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 I uh, wasn't as affected by it, but I felt the same way. Um, like I like I, I I I always replay that scene from from uh, uh, Amistad in my head when uh, when the guy uh, when one slave is talking to J- what's his, how do I say his name J- J- uh, uh, <laughs> you know everybody knows up. what I'm talking about he's making mess it up uh, uh, <laughs> D I J O N what is it uh, uh, um, but but uh, there's in the scene where he just sort of says like you know like you know we had we have the people who we look look up to but I look at this man and he rose and did blah blah right like and like that helped him to that helped him to understand like oh we need to be out of this we need to be better than this like this guy was and I, but but throughout the movie I kept thinking about that specifically like I used to. Uh, be a Christian when I grew up. When I grew up Christian, and I and I now don't necessarily follow or practice. Uh, but I think about like how, like we as a people, had our way of life and our way of you know of thing and 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 specifically in this movie, he says like we were told X, Y, and Z, but then for for X, Y, and Z, there's A, B, and C later that tells, on. Yeah, <laughs> that tells different, you know, and uh, and. I, that was really powerful for me, and this this sequence of scenes leading up to this particular moment. I think the reason that moment was so strong was because I I was angry at him. Like, why is he not preaching? Why is he not doing what a preacher would do, which is like, uh, uh, this is what I feel called or compelled to speak to this body of people. But he wasn't allowed. But he to. wasn't allowed to. Yeah. But then, but then the the, the, the slavers in that moment made the mistake of saying, "Don't I don't care what he says, as long as he's preaching the word." And and they get on board. You know and what I mean? They said, like, "I don't care how that, good he they, is." They, they, they said, yeah. "But that's what they said." And he can say, "So long as," and they said, "Like though, so long as he's saying the word." Right. But they also, but they also said, and this one thing we did skip when that when that main slave guy is walking him back, he was like, "And if you guys have a problem with how we run things, how we do things, and what you want to say, don't come past this step, or I will shoot you dead." Like, yeah, yeah no, like yeah, he I makes it, he makes it very adamant. Like, if this goes south, I feel like he was gonna kill Sam too. But I think, and the thing is, once their spirits were raised, I think they were like, oh, cool, you're doing the thing. So basically, we, we cut to, uh, this is working out, Sam is getting making money, so now he's going to hold a big dinner to show off all of the money and the fact that the Turner name has been restored. And this is kind of where Sam goes bad, if you would. Because uh, he really needs this. Because he really needs this. And, uh, and so, you know, he has this thing, and at the at the party, after the festivities are over, one of the guests requests, you know, Gabrielle Union. First off, he grabbed, like, at the dinner table. Grabs her. He grabs her thigh at the dinner yeah. table. And says something like meat, like blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then and then he's, and then he, so he's requested that person. So Sam has okayed Gabrielle Union to be raped. 
And and I will say, man, I really wish that other rape scene wasn't in this movie because this scene, I guess there, there were no, you didn't see rape happen in this film. I will say this scene did personally affect I, affect me like emotionally and uh i and it is sad it's very sad that the i i also noticed that gabriel union didn't speak and it was silent and that didn't feel right and at the same time as a man as a person who is supposed to be the husband and as a husband you are protect you are the protector you know and i know that's like it, it plays into gender roles but the, the fact of the matter is like men are physically stronger usually than the woman that they are with and so i know for me it was like to be a person who this is the person that you love and respect and treasure and that person now is f- being forced to go and get raped by another person and you literally cannot do anything about it and you are physically unable and you are just completely you know what i mean like stripped of the role of protector you are no longer protecting this person i w- like both of those and then her coming out and gabrielle union's clear like distraught and the fact that she was been completely violated like both of those things occurring at the same time was so like horrific to me that i was like oh my god like it was a very powerful disturbing very sad moment it's interesting because i had almost the opposite effect i was instantly pissed off because i was like i didn't like it is and i i agree with that as a man but like for some reason seeing and, and things leading up to it you kind of knew what was happening like like all of a sudden like nat is at the door and he's like no i'm not doing this i'm not doing this to watch three dudes discuss what is about to happen to this woman right and the main fact so there's three dudes right here and then in the house is two guys is sam and then whatever guy that wants um his wife who we still don't know her name um because I think they barely said it, even in this scene. It's like, she comes out. We don't see her. We don't, like, does right. she know what's about to happen? What is she feeling? What is going on? Is anybody, is there any females with her trying to comfort her? Like, when she walks out, what is going on? When she comes back, are her friends not waiting for her? Do we see the, uh, we see the shot, right? We see the shot of um, Gabrielle Union. Then we cut back to the shot of her husband and then Nat and the other guy standing behind her. And then we see the rage in this guy's face. And then he hugs her. We don't cut back to Gabrielle Union. I get it. This man is affected. Fuck this guy. Fuck all of them. How does she feel? N- like, this movie has had two super dramatic rape scenes, and we still don't know how the women feel about it. At no point do they discuss it. Because the mom doesn't because discuss Nate it. Because Nate Parker was like, I'm about to have a scene. Man, where fuck I, that, no, man. no, I mean, fuck no. That. We yeah, it's, it's, I, I mean, it's the. It's, exactly. Show I mean, me them. Why are we surprised the same misogyny that exists in Hollywood? Mm-hmm. Yeah, would infiltrate this. Wouldn't infiltrate this movie. Yeah. We don't care about women when they're sexually assaulted. We use it for good emotional drama manipulation. Because I do think I would have personally, I would have loved to see her face. Like they didn't show us. Yeah, her. well, they showed her face when she came out. No, but we didn't see her entering. We didn't see her entering. Yeah, we didn't see her deal with it. Before and after, we, we didn't we see. We saw her after. We saw people talk about her. Yeah, right. we could have. We, and we could have even done that and honored the silence piece. But we didn't see her as a black woman going to face a huge challenge and then being changed by it. Yeah, no, we I, didn't. We didn't see it. So I didn't have that feeling for her. She was an object in that moment for me because we didn't give her her humanity in that hor- horrific moment. We saw the humanity of the men who were talking about it, who were bartering for her, but we didn't see her humanity. And that's the thing that I'm like, that's same old Hollywood shit. We see women used and their sexuality as tools. We see them raped as great plot devices, but we don't deal with the emotional consequence of their existence. And that film, and that moment, that's where it failed me because I understand Gabrielle Union's choice, but the film failed her as an actor and yeah. it failed the character. Especially because, especially because she had no character before the scene. No, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. 
In fact, who I, she is. Only, I only remember her. <laughs> I mean, right? Yeah. Well, I've, she just married. You saw her marriage scene. scenes. Yeah, that's it. You saw she got married and then she got raped. And for the most part, those those moments happen from afar. Like, yeah, we see like her up and up close of her spinning around. Yeah, in and the smiling. Dance. And but I was like, oh wow, Gabrielle Union's really pretty. But so yeah. much of that is so much of that is is. Is background. It feels like it feels like back. Then when she comes out of the house, it's it's literally shot from their POV the whole of time. her of her walking out of the house, like from where yeah. they're standing. Like even when Keisha gaze. said, the male, the male gaze. Like imagine what Keisha said. Imagine how powerful it would have been just to see her walk up the steps. Yeah. What greeted What greeted her when she walked in the door of the house? Yeah. Was Sam there? Was the guy waiting at the door? Imagine what it was like. And we could have just seen her enter the room, That's it. door shut. And then her come out. Just see exactly what would her body like physically what would have changed in her? What would the emotions have been like? We don't know because we didn't give a fuck. At no point did this movie give a fuck. It's supposed I'm supposed to give a I'm supposed to care about this dude who's supposed to care about black people. And why? Why does he care about black people? What gives him the Cause, right? Cause well, because literally, because his his wife was raped and now he feels emotionally yeah, no, invested. Literally, in Literally, right? the movie is a string of like Man, when can movie. when can. It really feels like this, and this is a this is a, the it legit is a string. feeling it's that a I string had. Of, a string of, of when is Nate Parker gonna have a cr- like a tear go down his? Do you know yep. what I mean? Like, well, like, it, it was. It was like t- it, there was like a string of events. These were two of them. They weren't the only ones. It was like the uh, the guy again. Blah, we see him looking at the little girl with the f- neck. Blah blah blah. Seeing a man hung. Uh, you know, he sees he sees it, and it's like bu- it's like a building, I guess. This actually wasn't even the last moment. What was the last no. straw? Oh, the last straw is him getting whipped. Yeah, so the last, last straw is him. Baptized, he baptizes a white man. Uh, he knew he wasn't supposed to. Wasn't supposed to. He knew he was going to get in trouble for it. He does it anyway. We don't know who this white man is. Nope. The white man never comes seen out of before. nowhere. Never I seen him was again. so confused because he looked like... He looked like the preacher. He looked like the preacher. Yeah, yeah. I, I but feel, he wasn't. And, and then I got mad because I was like, that's bad casting. It was. <laughs> no, it was bad casting. You had no idea who this dude was. He came out of freaking nowhere. And we had no reason to... We don't, Im- know, we don't even know why Nat is so... Adamant about baptizing Literally the him. whole movie, I wanted him to be a more um, uh, a more devout preacher. Like I, I wanted, so him, wanted that. Like I, I wanted was that more and more. Starving and, for the preaching, and and it it, 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 ha- it and especially because and like the a, visions, the visions yeah. were the visions all, were weird. The yeah. visions were very short, and and they were mostly him in the field, him at, like with the African p- paint, uh, looking at his son, and I, I, none of it was. We didn't see God talk to him. We didn't right. hear which, which is what he's which, which is what he's what he historically said. the battle of Nate Park uh, 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 Nat Turner is the struggle between him and his 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 religion his belief. The fight is the fact that like he wants to avenge the people like his people black people, but that is not what at first a Christian man should do. He shouldn't kill another person. So that is the battle. He goes with it because he has a vision and he speaks to God. Not because his wife, I mean, again, maybe his wife was raped, but that wasn't a part of like what the history books That was not the primary, that was not the main thing for telling him. No, but it's a great plot device. But you don't need to do that, man. Like you could just have, I. yeah, yeah, 100%. Sorry, the thing that happened in this movie just makes me so fucking mad. And the fact that people pray, like coming out of Sunday, this movie was praised. This movie got a standing ovation. And for what? For what? Because this movie, you know what it is? This movie is a bit. This movie is a bit in a Chris Rock movie. This is a movie in top five. He made a movie where the fucking black but dude kills. The Chris Rock it. movie would I would have rather seen that movie. I would have rather seen it. That movie yeah. was just people killing people. <laughs> but what I'm saying, but this is like this is this is like a plot. You so this movie was publicized for being like the movie where black people come back and fight. They don't fucking fight nobody for real in this movie. No. This movie is a this movie may have been more of a stereotypical black slave movie than when white people do it. Fuck yeah. this movie. Who is he trying to please? Who who was this movie made for? Him. It was Us? made for him. It, it was, was made for him. You know it was it's made, for him. made for him. I mean, he doesn't so deny white that people it was could made for him. Right, yeah, no, exactly. He, exactly. Was, he doesn't deny that it was made for him. He I think I do believe that in his heart he feels that this movie is also relevant to the time and speaking to Yes, blah, blah, which blah. is which is also why like and I and I wanted to say because we're almost there. I agree that I wanted more out of the rebellion. I was just shocked that when it happened, I was like, whew, now so it's basically, finally happened. So basically, let's you get to I mean? it, right? Like, <laughs> so this happens, he baptizes a white man, the, you know, his owner's like, what are you doing? Nobody's gonna let you preach anymore because you baptize this white person. 
So he basically has this uh, v- uh, versus match, like biblical shout, shout off, which I was really it. cool. They, they, uh, they, I enjoyed that. that I was, didn't no, enjoy I definitely that. enjoyed yeah. that. Like, I yeah. wish there was more of that in the movie. Anyway, yeah. But yeah, basically, he, the guy's like, he's like, he's like, look, I'm a servant of God, and he's like, yes, but the you you need to obey the Holy Spirit, and he's like. Uh, he's like, beware false prophets. Like, <laughs> they, they have this amazing ver- verse off. When he says, beware false prophets, he gets slapped. They're like, chain him up, whip him. He gets whipped. He he endures the whipping. He stands up as a sign of protest. Like, you can't break me. Um, you know, uh, what, whatever. I, that This whole part was too long. Not just the actual whipping, but the aftermath of it was like, are you okay? And then they showed him getting patched up. And then he was... Fainted and then he leaves and then he comes back and his grandma's dead now, and uh, I, and there was a the candle thing and then there was a candle yeah. thing and there was like right, and which then is another like, flash what? thing or whatever the flip and, and the then, candle thing I felt like if, was supposed to mean something but didn't and, right and, and, yeah. to be and even but, I can't even yeah. say that the whipping was the main thing because then it seemed like time passed after the whipping happened and there, it, it, all of a sudden this movie felt like it was coming. I was like about to reach the rebellion and then it waited a lot it lulled a little bit again and then all of a sudden I honestly don't remember what the final thing was I just remember them in the woods and he's like all right uh I think we're going to rebel well it wasn't yeah. and like, it wasn't a okay. grand thing it was like his 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 grandmother died his grandmother died, and then he like what literally happened? Was it the grandmother's death? I think the I grandmother's think it was the grandmother's death. But then, all, but, 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 but also, I think it. I think it. I mean, obviously, a rebellion would be in secret, so he would have to sneak out to do it anyway. But I think the idea was supposed to be like right after he was lit, people they were like, you know, you can't preach anymore, and you and you can't go off with a group of people anymore. Like, well, not for a while. And I th- so I think that the only reason they meandered that. Was just to give right. us. So none sense. of this is true, by the way. The actual Nat, Nat Turner actually wasn't even at the Turner farm anymore. He was oh. actually sold in, to another sl- family. Yeah. There was a p- period of time where he ran away for 30 days. He came back because God told him to. And so he started replanning the rebellion probably, in, I think they said in February, and they actually commenced in August. So we didn't see any of that. What we did see was a very short scene where he has a couple of the sla- He's like, he's like, gather the slaves around. We're gonna have a meeting tonight, and the guy's like, "Great!" And so there's like five men. Also, one of them some is a boy. Of those, also, some of those two slaves, the the boy and the one with the scar, is from the the plantation. The other plantation. Of, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Which I don't know they, how they. I don't know how that happened. The fact that just slaves can just. Oh, okay. Oh, whatever. No, anyway. yeah, and, and I mean it happened. I think. It, well, they, that's. that's they, a, but they, but that's the thing is they don't they don't they didn't show the planning of it. They didn't show. The, that would have been so secret, cool. Like, yeah. like showing how how do you and you how, know how you cross planta- plantation speak to people? I was you know how yeah. they did? so curious about that. that. In real life, apparently, they use slave songs to communicate things. Yeah, how cool is that? How did you not put that in this movie? And and I didn't free know that. and free. And how people smart were, is that? You know what I'm saying? Like that, they didn't show. That, that's that's the thing about that that really that really shook me about this movie. Was like you actually didn't show the intelligence. Yeah. of Nat Turner. Yeah. Well, or or how black people were being smart. Right. And, That's- like, here's the thing. In my mind, what I wanted was a badass slave spy movie. Yeah. 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 Like that's, yeah. that's the coming t- together and the planning of it and the, yeah. With a no. little bit of super ha- powers of seeing I know. the future. Did we say, and like, that's what, that's it. <laughs> we said this about, I think yeah. we said that yeah. same thing about Django, right? They're like, couldn't Django have been a really cool slave? Yeah, we definitely said he could right? have been like the, 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 the cool with the plane. And, yes, Which, and at least Django, at least there was a little bit more. Right. At least I there mean, was a little bit more. Honestly, but even comparison, still, but you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So basically, they have this little meeting. Oh, whatever. We're gonna we're gonna rebel. Okay, great. Uh, but what about the white people? There are more of them, and they have guns. Other slaves will join us. We'll go to Jerusalem. They have guns there. We'll wait for a sign. Okay, great. So they're in the field. A solar eclipse happens. This is this is real. First of all, can I say one thing as you're talking about the scene? His the Gabriel Union's husband, like uh, Nat's number two was so funny in this movie to me because he was just ready. He was already like, ready. He was, oh, like, they yeah, all like, were. They were just like, like yeah. mm-hmm. even, even before this, so like when... when I yeah. feel like they yeah, could have... like, now? He's like, yeah. no, no, no. Like I feel when, like they could have mined the comedy so much harder yeah. being like, yeah, let's do this Yo, shit. He, he was... He was, The thing is, this movie did have a couple of like comedic moments they were trying to do, which I thought was interesting. But like, when my man... But just going back, before Nat gets beat, like when they're like, when he's having like the, 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 the scripture battle, 
they they beat him and hit him to the ground. My man grabs a piece of wood, <laughs> yeah. and that's like, nah, He's nah, ready. nah. He was ready. And this he is ready. pre. This, this is, is pre discussion, discussion of the discussion. <laughs> any discussion of the rebellion. I love like that. The discussion, my man. The clips happens. The shot is on that the whole time. All of a sudden, the camera pans out. My man is looking at that with two bags of cotton. Like, we good? We, is it nail? Like, we gonna kill some white people? My man was ready. That whole movie. He was ready the whole movie. I. He wanted to die. I mean, he wanted to go out killing white he, folks. He was. Yeah. He was, he was ready. ready. Go uh, out yeah. white folks. Well, yeah. now that that's the one character I was like, I get that metaphor nowadays. Like, like that was the character who I'm like, okay, I get what you're trying to say. I, I get it, bro. You <laughs> you ready? Like, dude, the shot. Keisha, we saw this movie. The shot of my man in the field holding those bags of cotton, yo. When the when the when the camera got to him, you heard people just go nuts. It was like. Oh, he's not ready. Oh, my yeah. My man was staring like, at him, though. Uh, they, you guys saw it in Harlem. We saw oh, it in yeah. Harlem, Great. bro. You saw it in Harlem. So, so many black people are like, kill white I, people. I, I think I had a pee at this point. Oh, no. Oh, And no. I remember checking my... <laughs> you got checking my clock, and it was... Uh, there was only 25 minutes left in the film. Nobody has died yet. And I was like, what the flip? Yeah, oh, you're like, there's uh, no had a pee. So I had a pee, so I ran, I ran out. I peed real quick. I think I peed at the part where the other guy, the... House slave, slave yeah. Rogers, like, was Roger was telling Smith him again, like love yeah, God love right. That's oh, what yeah, Tessa yeah. told me right. Yeah, like, yeah. He said God is love. God's also a, a God of love. He's that heard what you want to do. I heard what you want to do. You know that guy. That guy's great. He was in Dope. He was I, in Dope. Now, such a I different character. Really he liked, was Spike Lee guy. He's always in Spike Lee movies. I, I really like that scene that he had. Him delivering that in a way like I I liked. I liked this in a way that I appreciated more than uh, than uh, Samuel Jackson's character in in Django. Yes. Oh, because like, he's not a he's not a he, he was so like he was he's so in the, he's just in like the, he's in the brotherhood, right? He, yeah. But he was he just feels like for his he was fellow. just like you know we are definitely alive if we do that. You know what I mean? Like he it was, was scared so, for everybody. It was such a like. I mean, he's right. He yeah, was scared for yeah. he was. He was right, and then he like was oh, right. he oh, was right. I, 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 I you really are all like dead. Scene. Once yeah. this happens, you're all dead. I was like, Period. yeah, There's not, you're not going to win, but you're going to kill us. And, and the, uh, the only reason that I liked it was because I was so ready for the rebellion to happen that, like, just to hear someone say that as well was just like, okay, yeah, that, yeah, I mean, that guy was absolutely right. Like, yeah, I mean, he like even after like you know as we know and John said earlier, like when the rebellion ends. They killed two hundred something black. Yeah, people. they killed. Yeah. they killed people. Every with male, nothing to do. Every male, all the males. And he, and he specifically said, like, he was like, "We're dead. We're dead anyway." Yep. But now you've killed all, all of us, and it was just like, oh, oh, uh, man. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Well, and I just liked it because I leaned over to draw. I was like. That man looks like my grandpa. Yeah, you did. You definitely <laughs> he, did. No one ever thinks that like my grandpa's like that light, but like my grandpa, like he looked. I was like, Grandpa, yo, tell tell us about kindness, you house slave. I mean, and, <laughs> God. And, I mean, uh, did we have we got to the rebellion? No, yet? that's what I'm saying. I, I see, told you, I checked my phone. Is, it was twenty. There was still twenty five minutes. That left. scene that I was talking about is no after rebellion. the rebellion. Is like after the rebellion has begun, but no, we that haven't scene, officially. Literally to after it. that scene, they're like, okay. It's here. They go. You know, the first thing that we see is Nat Turner killing Sam. Yeah. Uh, it's a weird scene. I don't know. It, first off, he doesn't even when he kills Sam. First off, like John, like you said, they set this up like this was his friend, right? My man. Kind of. Yeah. They did kind, in the beginning I mean, well, and then they of, didn't follow through. But there was like even even if my friend turns into an evil person, like I have a friend who was locked up. Like we ain't that cool. But like if I yeah. had to like be in a situation where I had to go against this dude, I'm gonna feel some type of hesitation or like. Yeah, Ugh, and uh, in, the, in, in Nat Turner's real confession, he stated that he could not kill his master. Yeah, again, it wasn't Sam Turner; it was another guy. Uh. But he he went to kill his master. He couldn't do it. His right hand man killed him. Yeah, mm. I don't know why Show they would take that, that out no, of the movie. I read, Show me that. I read that too. Why didn't they take but that out of the? The, the reason that I think they why? took it out yeah. of the movie is because the only person he claims to kill is a woman. Is a woman. It's true. And. In the movie, Hope, we don't. Who claims to kill? Nat the only Turner person, said the only to, person he actually he, killed was he his admits woman, was to killing woman. at the start of the, at the start of the rebellion is a, a woman in the in his. In and he said he didn't kill anybody country. else. He didn't kill anybody else. Uh, in real life. In, in real, real life. life. In in in. But it's not. It is someone else writing his account. It's not uh, something okay. that he wrote. Uh, but the, but the but so this was a, th- a problem. You know, in omission, a uh, an artist. Uh, 
uh, artistic license that they took yeah. that I didn't like. So throughout the movie, they're showing the mother figure, the the uh, Sam Sam mom. Sam's mom, yeah, as like white, she's white like woman. just very passive. You know, she looks but like, like she's but about that, to cry all the time. All the, all time, the time because she thinks it's wrong. She's always wanted to train him or whatever. You know, she's always she thinks slavery. She is thinks wrong, slavery maybe. is wrong. Blah blah, blah whatever, whatever. I don't know. You know, but it feels like they're trying to to hit that home. We want to feel that way about this woman. But then in the actual rebellion, they killed everybody. Any man, woman, and child. Man, woman, and child. Yeah. They killed a baby. It, they killed a baby. They go back for a baby. They go back to kill a baby. But in the movie. It seems like the and we talked about this up top, but I didn't want to talk about and it. Wait, in real life they go back. Yeah, in, in the, the real, real in, in real, real life, life they go back. They for slaughtered a baby. everybody in the house. They left a baby. They left, and then they were like, "Now nah, we actually got to kill that baby." Uh, but again, but again, but I will say this again. This is a uh, another person telling his account, right? right? And so now we have other people telling his account too. Now, right? But specifically trying to paint him to be to be a. Trying to paint him to be a good person. Well, they're writing down as things the leader, that he said, right? But as the lead, yeah, they're writing down okay. things that he said. Yeah. They are writing down things that he said, yes. Yeah, yeah. But in this movie, they kind of like, in order to make him seem like even, I guess, quote unquote, better than he was, they don't yeah. show him killing everybody. But but I don't know. It feels like they they like skimped on the well, on the rebellion. Of the rebellion they- Pretty much only show them killing Two people, mostly right? men, and yeah, I think maybe men. one. Maybe they killed one woman. When? No, not Did they? really. But that's the. the I, I feel like so. they showed they showed them actually leaving women and children alive. Yeah, and so and so the thing is, my the reason why I have an issue with that is not only did that not is that not what happened, but you know. It, it continues to perpetuate this idea that, like, well, they were good, so they weren't. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't kill them because they were the good ones. But it's like versus no. versus this was an ugly time in yeah, American yeah, history exactly. where people were driven to the acts of like, I'm going to kill that baby because that baby might grow up and murder me. Exactly. Like, yeah. 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 It's also, like, also, just so you know, it, because of all the biblical stuff that he was getting, which was all Old Testament stuff about about like coming up and taking the sword. In the Bible, they're like, for instance, Saul, who was the, the king before David. David is very famous, right? Biblical figure. The reason that Saul lost favor with the Lord is because God told him to go and kill these people. And he says, kill all of them. Man, woman, child, cattle. Every I don't want anything left alive. And Saul kept some of the women and children alive. And God lost favor with them because of the disobedience of that. So think about that in that context. I feel like Nat Turner would have preached to the people, we have to kill everybody. You cannot spare anyone. Right. And so the brutality of these these slaves rising up and destroying everyone in the household, doesn't matter if you're a child, doesn't matter if you're a woman, yeah, it, it is was, a powerful image that I, exactly. not yeah. the I mean, film it's is like, weird. Yeah. I don't want to sound like I'm like, yo, but you're gonna everybody put rape in the film? should have, exactly. Exactly. but exactly, exactly, exactly. it's not, and, 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 you know, it, like, it, well, I'm not saying I, we need to be going around killing everybody, but, but it's that's, the what selective, that's what happened. It's that's the selective happened. brutality yeah. that yeah. we're admitting. Yeah. Right. Like, we're being, well, uh, be selectively brutal towards black bodies, but we won't show the fact that black bodies in that moment were brutal because that that's the options. Right, and if right. we're going to tell that history, we should now look at that moment in history and be like, what would drive a human to kill man, woman, child, mm-hmm. baby, and show that so yeah. we can therefore have the catharsis, the, the moment where we like start to ask ourselves, how were we this cruel? Yeah. Right. yeah. I keep thinking about, and this is probably a tangent that's unnecessary, but I keep thinking about Passion of the Ooh. Christ uh, as we talk about this. Yeah. Because I just, just remember this all the stuff. This is by far our longest episode. But I, that's okay. But, it was but going I keep, to be. But I keep thinking about how, like, when that movie came out, you know, and at that time, I was, I was very deep in the religion. So uh, uh, when that movie came out, people were like, you know, this movie shouldn't be made. Like, why? Like, why are they, why are they being so graphic? Blah, blah, blah. And the, and the reason behind it was, like, this is what it was. We're going to show this. Right. The crucifixion is like 45 straight minutes or whatever, right? right. <laughs> like, I'm just yeah. that. And, and I feel like if the reason behind making this movie is like, we need to, we want to show what really happened. We want to really get down to the meat of it. I feel like spe- to, yeah. to, to, to a- not show that is yes. doing a this disservice. This is the first like, slave movie, if you will, made by an American, African-American, period. And to me, like, when I, when I was thinking, the real, the real reason I was like, didn't want to see this movie, because I felt like, as a black man growing up in America right now, I would, if I was to make this movie, I would show you what our experience is, right? Like, I would show you 
what pushes people to do certain things? What like what drives you? What affects you? Like if you're gonna, for instance, if you're gonna show women be abused, if you're gonna show men get whipped, make people feel it. Make it so that it's so bad that when this rebellion happens, when you do these brutal things, people almost question, hey, maybe that was okay. Yeah. Hey, have you ever seen Sam you, Kaffa? Has anyone here? No. I'm gonna see, Google that right now. See, Sam, it, it's an uh, arty film about slavery. That's it. Definitely gets magical. Let me tell you that right now. But it's very Sam. What? Sam Kaffa. I would have just. I anyway. I mean, we all could have said what we would have done. <laughs> yeah. uh, so basically, they start killing people. Uh, you know, it's very, very small montage of them going from house to house, killing, ki- killing people. They finally get to the house of the the worst slave owner, and you know, the, one of the dudes is like, "Can I do it?" He goes inside. You hear, ah! The guy runs outside, and as he's running outside, he sees all the black men on the horses. He turns around, but by the time he turns around, this other dude is already caught up to him and just slashes him. It was. Possibly the best death in the entire film. I mean, uh, he basically, he basically <laughs> clotheslined him. He just clotheslined him with a knife. With a machete or something. Yeah, it was machete. just like, Foo! Uh But then after that happens, they're like, where's the kid? So the kid that was with him has gone to tell his master, you know, there are black people rising up, rebelling, killing white folk. So all of a sudden they start getting shot, you know. Which also they, did not happen. They, they dispersed. Weren't, they weren't back. They weren't, um, they weren't betrayed by a kid. Just right, yeah, yeah. They just they weren't betrayed by a kid, though. There have been reports of black slaves hiding their white masters. Oh, that being said, it was a weird. It was weird because there was no motivation for that kid to do it. They didn't explain it at all. And then they also try to tie him in at the end. Which anyway, we'll talk about that. So really quickly, they so they kind of disperse. They they retreat, but then they like I don't know. Go to sleep, I guess, and they all wake up at five a.m. in the morning yeah, for no what? reason. Uh, <laughs> what? And then happens? they're like, and then uh, who knows what where they were? They're just like, they they're, just like they're just like they retreated. <laughs> they retreated, and then they're like, and then it's like, oh, it's five a.m. and they're like, right now I would be doing this. I would be doing that. And it's like not today, not today. We're free. All right, to Jerusalem, and then they get to Jerusalem, and I don't know. I guess they had no plan for this. They just decided to just stroll up. All- on there, and of course, a bunch of white people come out. I mean, they slept. <laughs> they they had time. They knew you were coming. Uh, they come out. They have like a, a colonial line of like, all right, we're here with our axes and our pitchforks and our knives. All the white folk have guns. They start charging. I mean, the charge looks cool. It doesn't make sense. I thought that's how the movie was going to end. I thought it was going to end just with them like, well, just them getting murdered, right, yeah. right there. Yeah, and you're me, like, okay, I, I guess they're going to get murdered. That that felt like it would have been a satisfying ending, right? Yeah, I thought and it was uh, be but that doesn't happen. Apparently, all of those white people were terrible shots because, like, maybe four people go down. Well, well, well also, don't forget this is the t- <laughs> well, also don't forget this is the time because once they took their once the people with guns, the white people took their first shot. By the time it would have been time for them to reload, the blacks would have made it to them. Because yeah. this is the time, you know, it wasn't like the the automatics and whatever. Yeah, so they, they weren't automatics. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not, I mean, they probably would have got two shots off. They I think they would have got, got two shots. Also, like, it was just weird that, like, I felt like only four people, but whatever. Anyway, so they yeah. have a fight and they win this battle. Uh, Nat, Nat Turner finally kills, you know, the big bad white guy who's been there. He was there at his wife's rape. He was his there dad, at his dad. dad. And now he's here again at this final battle. He kills him. And you then they're like, built that guy up, really. I mean, it was very, it was a little bit sloppy. Ca- all, all the character Not development sloppy, was like, uh. It was, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so it felt kind of shoehorned in. And then they come and they finally get to the guns and they open up all where all the guns are, but there are stones in there. I guess the the British, the British, uh, the British. It's the it's the it's the Confederate <laughs> Confederate Army. Well, anyway, it's just the militia, probably, right? <laughs> yeah. So the local army is there. I don't know why they didn't help kill them before, but I guess they decided to just set this trap so that they would think that they won and then go, yeah. "Oh no, we didn't win." I mean, it was the most clearly set up for a cinematic reveal they had a but cannon, made no bro. logical sense they had a cannon. so then you know they all get shot up and then they get the cannon gets blown and then somehow nat escapes he just and, walks out he and, just runs and, out the back and his friend who wanted to get like die the whole time who was down to kill white people finally dies he dies yeah. he like and, runs out and he knows he's gonna get killed he gets shot up no no that's not even him the one with the scar runs out gets shot up 
The other friend who's with him the whole time happens to like. Oh, he's just there. He the the, the the cannon gets a piece of wood yeah, in his of neck. Right neck. And oh. then uh, so Nat uh, runs away. We have this weird scene with him and his wife. I mean, I felt like it was weird. Well, basically yeah, that scene, that scene to was her. only to you tell him. him. That scene was basically to set up him having to turn himself in. She said, they're killing everybody, all the men. They're going to keep right. doing it until you turn yourself in. And they in. have right. the, that's when they have the strange fruit that song. song. Is, that song is... Yeah. Just so, again, song is powerful, reality man. check. Nat Turner actually didn't turn himself in. He was discovered. He was captured. He yeah. was captured. Because he did get betrayed, right? Wasn't that the thing? Like, he did... Or did they just... Like, how did he... Like he, Somebody found him. They just found him? The, uh, some, a person, a white man found him. Uh, hiding. Uh, two months later, or a month or two months later, yeah. Um, cause they had a very detailed description of what he looked like. Oh, really? Like very detailed. <laughs> yeah. I read the, I read the yeah. warrant. I was like, holy crap. Yeah, they like describe his height, his build, his hair, his, his hair, skin tone, his, skin tone, his nose, all like bruises, like, like marks that would be on his body. Like so much stuff. Oh, wow. Anyway, so they found him. That would have been great to see. But anyway, they show him, I guess they, again, they wanted this messianic, it it does. I mean, the more we talk about it, the more I'm like, wow, Nate Turner. You really did make this film about you and more so Nate than Parker. about. They made he made it he made it he made Nate it Parker, his brave yeah. wolf. I mean, his um braveheart. Right. But yeah. it didn't feel. But it doesn't feel like that. At least to me, it did. It didn't. But that's so he it, comes and walks in, and, and yeah, they punch him, they beat him, and the thing is, the only reason that's I call a very it, scary shot for sure of all the white people, well, like. Ah, Let me like tell you what's so interesting anger. about that shot is that shot. There was a there was a um, there was a photo released recently. Uh, people who are in the politics, John, you might remember his name, but um, that 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 sheriff that that Don, that Donald Trump surrogate, the sheriff or whatever, oh, uh, yeah. the black guy who like, so yeah. he tweeted out a photo recently about like how like soft everybody is, like whatever. It's time, and he says everyone's really soft, and he tweeted out it's time to get the pitchforks and whatever the fuck, and it's a photo. Uh, just like crazed people holding like pitchforks and screaming, right? And then I watched the thirteenth, and in the thirteenth, you see from Trump rallies recently, white people as like blacks are like walking and being escorted out, just like punching them as they're leaving. And this that's a shot from this year. There's yeah. literally a guy who's being escorted out. He's going up the steps, and this older white older white man, white man who's maybe sixty five, <laughs> comes and just clocks him as he's leaving, and then someone else attacks him, and he's just walking up. In this shot, that's supposed to be from what, 1805, 18, whatever? I think 1830. 1830 something at this point, yeah. This is still happening. Like, literally, th- there's footage right now of people at Trump rallies pregnant. There's a, 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 yeah, a it's bit of white a world. rage. Just rage for what? White rage. For what, man? White well, rage. for a man who killed their. I mean, I'm talking about like, even now, it's like all this happens because just a skin tone, yo. But the, yeah. but it's uh, but it's the building up of, it's like putting black people in a situation in which. In which it is humanly logical for them to rebel, for them to lash out because of the amount of violence and oppression that you've placed on them. And then once they lash out, then you lash back at them even harder and say that they're animals. Uh, well, ha- yeah, well, it just makes me think it's like the idea that, um, like, one of the things uh, I read Malcolm Gladwell's David and Goliath, and this idea of that anytime you try to repress any culture, you actually create like an insurgency and a strength in them and a cunningness and a way of working around. So the the best thing we can do instead of like it's it's how we get groups like ISIS. It's how we like when we oppress people, the false idea is that enough oppression will silence people when in fact if oppression happens and there are survivors, they come back stronger and want more vengeance and will find more cunning ways to get around it. So it's very interesting to me that like we, we think that any of this will quell anything when actually it's the humanity of it all because we are creating like just just the idea of like beating down people makes them stronger. Like yeah. whoever survives it's the David and Goliath thing that we don't, we always underestimate the underdog and realize that sometimes the underdog, that is their greatest strength because they've never had to play by the rules that they are going to use that to overcome. Yeah. And like that's ultimately what this is insurgency is about that like you are using the fact that Nat Turner had access to all these different people to overcome. Yeah. Harumph. And it, and it and ends with that shot of him being 
hung. And and to me, this this is what I consider the Braveheart moment. Like, if right. you've seen Braveheart, like it ends with Mel Gibson getting his, as many people believe, his uh, what did it come like? His guts or his like what's it when they t- disemboweled? Disemboweled. Oh, was it? Oh, oh it was castrated. castrated. I thought he was getting castrated. Oh, okay, maybe. But it's like is. basically it's that shot of just like it, he screams freedom or whatever, and then this shot is like uh, Nat Turner just like strong. I'm ready. He says I'm ready. That's his he, final words, and, and then he gets hung, and he's just looking straight dead. Fast. Now what they didn't show, and what really happened is after that happened, they they tore that man tore apart. him apart. And uh, so they dismembered him. They wrote so it though. They so. wrote it in the um, epilogue. They wrote it. They wrote it in the epilogue. But yeah, tell him, tell him what they did to him, bro. I mean, they they skinned used, him. They they, they used his, what is his guts, the the grease tires. Yeah, they turned uh, him into grease. They they took his a uh, skull and 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 placed it in like scientific laboratory or something. They like passed it around. They passed yeah. around it the around. Like to make people sure took would... home pieces of flesh as mementos. Like just. I mean, so much. I, I still don't understand how people could want another human body as a, a, a memento. I still like. Yeah. Like, how do you want to own one? I, I mean, I mean, we see this behavior in the Holocaust. We've seen this. Be- like, Gross. this isn't like a new thing. But like, wh- what the fuck, humanity? Well, just it, saying. It shows what happens when you are forcing yourself into such depravity, because then we convert back to a very, very animalistic way. So yes. like people get so desensitized to the violence that is so all around them. Which, and of course that's going to happen when you are treating people like they are animals. Um, anyway, so nice. we also, it also ends with, we see a bunch of people getting hanged, black bodies everywhere. Uh, and then, but then the final shot, the final shot is the kid sees uh, Nat Turner getting hung and it's the kid who betrayed him and he sees him and then puts his, head, his, he puts his head down. And then he, you know, I guess he's sad about it. And then all of a sudden it transforms and now it's the civil war. And that same kid is fighting in the civil war. Yeah. What? Like for yeah. America? Remember cause, the kid, Cause the kid cries. For the union. He's the, fighting union. the union. He's I love how union. union translates Why? to America. What? Yeah. What? It, how? He's showing a fight. It's still, I don't know, man. And then it ends with like Nat Turner, like back in the dream sequence, and it's his younger self, and now the older self is standing up, and the older self is walking towards camp. Man, whatever, dude. So that's the uh, all right. I'm gonna tell y'all right now. I ain't got a swirl for this movie because again, fuck this movie. <laughs> so if you want, like, just I just got. Nah, I mean, there's no it, swirl. There's no swirl. Yeah, there's no swirl. No, I mean, I guess it would be I between mean, him and, and the, the mom. and the mom. Yeah, but you know what? Gross. Again, no, we don't been. want. Nobody wants to hear but that. You know what? You know what? Fuck this movie. <laughs> so it's like, you know what? This, putting this role in this movie would have made this movie better. And you know what? Fuck that. So All next. Right. Yeah. No, there, I mean, I don't have anything either. It just feels weird. I mean, fuck yeah, this. We I mean, like, about. we were talking about this movie yeah, for how long? Mike, this? how long has this been going on? Yeah. Woo! 209. We've Dude, never yeah. reached that. Yeah, we're over two hours. That's the first time. Uh, great. So the cause we rate films not based on how much we liked it, but whether or not it helps the cause of more leading black actors in Hollywood. Uh, so if we believe it helped the cause, it's a black fist. If we believe it uh, uh, fully. If it's a black fist, so so a white palm. If we don't believe it helped the cause, uh, then nothing. So remember, it's about whether it helped the cause of more leading black actors in Hollywood. <sighs> What's this? What is it? All right, you guys ready? Nope. Not really. Honestly, I'm not. I'm kind of struggling. I'm going back and forth. Uh, I'm not ready at all for this. I'm going back and forth. I mean, I think I know what I'm going to do, but... Okay, here we go. <laughs> Three. Two. One. All right. We this got makes two sense. white palms and two nothings. <laughs> I'll go first. The reason I gave out a white palm... I actually almost gave it a fist. The oh, reason that I'm not giving it a fist is because uh, Nate Parker's past, especially in relation to what this film is, uh, is un- it, it, it's just irreconcilable. So I think this could have potentially done more for his career. I don't think it will. Um, I think this movie could have got a lot of Oscars or at least a lot of nominations. It might, but I, I don't think it's winning anything anymore. And I think it's it's very possible it's not going to get nominated. There are actually a lot of great black films. Right Moonlight, now. Uh, Moonlight Queen comes of, out. Yeah, Queen Moonlight. of Katwe, Katwe, Katwe. 
the uh, <laughs> the what's the one with the hidden figures? Oh, anyway, hidden figures, there's baby. Stuff. There's a lot of stuff. Woo! Women working for South NASA. Side, Black women South working for NASA. You. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff. Woo! We don't we don't need this film. Nope. Uh, that being said, I can't I can't ignore the fact that it set a record at Sundance, seventeen point five million dollars, and and a, a and whatever his motives and intentions were a black man black african american got to tell a black african american story uh and was validated for it uh and you know people were told him that this story cannot be told that it would not you know do well blah 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 all this other stuff and it had a very promising start i think so for that alone I think that it has done something to move the needle for black actors. Anyway, so that's my my time. Yeah, and and uh, just because so many of my things connect to what you just said, I'm just gonna quickly say like, yeah, like it set that record at Sundance, which is like dope. Um, you know, like I keep seeing Coleman Domingo and more and more stuff. So like stuff like that, like the fact that. There, Who's you know, that? Who's that? Colm Domingo is, the, is he played his character. He was the right hand man. Uh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Hark, Hark, Hark Turner was his name. Um, and, and and you know it, the the like while we've been talking about how like the script left a lot to be desired as far as like like the actors didn't have a a, a lot to deal with, and so like I think that that's a problematic uh, thing about it. Um, but like because it gave so many black people jobs um that's why i gave it a that's why i gave it a fist i was going uh, sorry a palm i was going back and forth between a, a palm and nothing as well so um i'm interested to see what you guys say i gave it nothing because uh when i think of black actors i'm including black women and i don't think it will do anything to further black women and on top of that, I think too many people in Hollywood will look at this story as a failure. Even though it did well in Sundance, I think they're going to look at look like Ghostbusters, like the reboot of Ghostbusters, and think, look, we gave them a chance. <laughs> and it failed, and use that as an excuse to not green light these type of movies where black people directed and created and wrote them and starred in them. So I think it will be uh, used as an excuse of like, well, we tried it and now we can't. And so I think it is actually going to long-term be a roadblock. Yeah, yeah, man, I get this movie nothing because it deserves nothing. (laughs) Uh, I think... (laughs) I think uh, uh, I'm trying. And this is like I'm not even including Nate Parker's like past because I mean the man was acquitted, so I guess I got to give him that. Um, movie doesn't do well for women of color. Honestly, it gave black people roles. I'm not even sure they should have wanted to be in this movie. I think this movie will be considered a failure, so it won't help any of those people out. Um, I also think that I live in a time now, and I'm only speaking for myself. That is 2016. I'm tired of seeing black bodies beat. I think I'm tired of seeing, and the thing is, I, I think what's going to happen, and my fear is that seeing these images in the news and in the media of, of you know, black people killing each other, whether it's on TV, whether it's like another slave movie, I'm scared that soon people will be desensitized to seeing our bodies as something that's worth being valued because we're so accustomed to seeing beat down and victimized because it's just, it's just in the media. Even when we listen to certain music, it's like, it, I, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a part of it, you know? Like, I, I listen to certain rap songs, and it's like, it's talking about shooting somebody. It's talking about, like, you know, women with big asses, you know? Like, that's, that's, those are the things that are in the media that represent us, you know? And this is a movie, to me, like, that was written by a black man, directed by a black man. And to me, this didn't tell the black story better than, uh, what is it, the British black guy who did 12 Years a Slave. Yeah. Like this, this didn't do a better job at that than anything else. This played up every trope that was there. I would have preferred if this movie. To me, this movie should have been a horror movie. Like this, this, like for, for if we're gonna start before the rebellion, this should have been hor- This should have been something that is like. And again, it was rough, but it's like this should have been something that was so devastating, so so horrible that no matter who watched it, watched this, 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 
they would have felt some type of empathy for the people besides the same. Like John said, seeing that girl with a, a, a leash, if you will, around her neck, play, playing with her owner, like that is some tr- like that is that is an image, you know. Uh, whatever, man. Fuck this movie. And the thing is, made, this movie makes me question everybody that loved it. Yeah. And now, honestly, it came out getting so hyped. It's like for what? Why? Because it showed. Oh, oh, that's right. Because this movie is the movie where the black people, you know, fight back before they die for ten minutes. Right? Great. This movie deserves a lot. No. This what what, what woman and in this movie talks about anything of value? Like literally on her death or his wife, when she is still face busted and he's asking to find out the names of the people who did this to her, he gives her a Bible verse, which is great. But the only point of her saying that Bible verse is to help propel him into finding some type of rage. It's not for her. It's It's not to show that she is still holding strong. Literally at one point when she gets healed, she says, you know what? I'm not scared. I knew this day was going to come. I knew you were going to be great, or whatever the hell she says. It's about him, and I get it. And that turn is a thing. Like the whole point is about like him being like this, this, this leader. But it's like people around him. Women exist. Women. Like you're telling me in any all these fucking slave movies, not one woman is strong. Period. Now you're not telling me. You're not telling me Gabrielle Union's character is strong. wasn't. Look, fuck. Look, Peter nah. was begging to die at one point. Is that the strength? That and we, and Peter, she was begging him when he got away. Remember, when, like when he was leaving, she was begging him to take her with her or to kill her. When was she strong? When? No, I agree. I agree. Like, when are we going to see a black woman in one of these movies that exists mainly to? E- I, I mean, we we all know black women today, right now, that are strong, and it's really hard that none of that strength has existed in our films. That's true. It doesn't. I, and I, 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 as someone, and yet, who, and yet the most, the most famous. Slave ever is Harriet Tubman. Where's her movie? Yeah. Where's, Where's her trilogy? I mean, she really is trilogy. the most yeah. famous. You know what I mean? Where, where is it? Where's yeah. the movie? And I and and here's the we've been talking about this a lot, and I've been not saying this, but this is the thing that I think uh, I struggle with too. So like we're, we're talking about how we don't want to see black bodies beaten anymore, right? Like, we don't think we need to see it. And we talk about, like, how, like, we think that the reason for doing it is so that people can make the connections to what's going on today and, and, the, and that yeah. we can never forget, right? Right? Like, we, we say that, too. Mm-hmm. But it's, there's, I think we're starting to, to see um, that, like, you know, like, that, the, that there are a lot of people whose minds uh, are, it's hard to change. Like, it's, it's. it's very hard to change certain minds. Certain minds look at the world in certain ways, right? And so we know that there are black people that, you know, we know that this shit happens, and we we feel bad about it, and 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 we want to we want to move we want to move past this. We want to get past, you know. And there are white people who know that 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 this has happened, and they and they feel, you know, bad, you know, they 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 mm-hmm. have also feel. Bad. But then there are also there are people who like to see black people hanging you know and like those are the people who we want to change right those are the people whose views we want to change people are going to watch this movie and feel changed no and that's uh, for me that's part of why i struggle with why these movies are made, right? Because we don't want to forget, but we won't forget. We know. We know. We will never. But but we, we, we but, never... but why that part of history? Why not Jim Crow? Because yeah, I yeah. want to remember Jim Crow. I want to remember all the moments, all the black bodies that swung when we were technically free, but still yeah. swung from trees and were yeah. uh, castrated and raped. What? Let's talk about this contradiction in american history when we had freedom and so much violence was perpetuated right. when we were enslaved because in work that, camps because then that might even more affect at least the people who are like i get it but maybe they don't get it to no that, to, right to, to, to I mean, me what it affects is like how like john i think maybe keisha said it too is like it affects that thing of like when people watch these movies like oh man we've come so past we're yeah, so far exactly from that. i'm not like that person the thing is if you make a movie about jim crow it ain't you, but if you watch that movie and you're sitting at the Thanksgiving din- dinner table with your your dad, yeah, or your granddad, yeah, that was him, right? That like that was him, right? The mere fact that like Trump is so big now, who 
They ex people like this exist, and right. if you make a movie like that, that is, we're not talking about and there's, years. And we're there's, talking about sixty. And yeah, there's this character. There's this. There's this character that sort of exists. get me out of here, John. Oh, yeah, we good now. Okay, no, I mean, get right. me out of here. All right. all right. We should have watched freaking like a. We could talk about this. All was there no happy movie? What? Uh, yeah. Jeez. So this uh, this episode was longer <laughs> than the movie, but that's okay. I mean, um, so we had a lot to talk about. Y'all, go, go watch something happy after listening to this podcast. Go hug somebody, yeah. man. How many people made it this far? I feel like everybody. Yeah, uh, well, yeah what, should they, what should they hashtag? If you made it this far... Um, hashtag rebel? No, man. Oh, hashtag goodness. love everybody, man. Like, oh, I, I like that. Hashtag love everybody. Like, hashtag just, just love like everybody. My, like, come Yo, on, if man. you made it this far, tweet at us. Hashtag love everybody. Go hug somebody. Thank you for... Thank you for for listening. Keisha. Thank you, Keisha, for coming. Keisha, thank Anything you. you want to plug? Um, Sure, I'll plug my podcast, Applying It Liberally, hosted with me and my hubby, and my other podcast, The Soul Glow Project. And uh, you can check me out on HBO's Divorce, yeah. but you have to watch until the end. That's what you're going to do, uh -oh. please. Watch the show until the end. Yeah, I'm in I'm in the finale uh, of the first season, and I, I tell people, watch it. Great. Uh, thank you so much again. And uh, we'll be back with our own plugs. Uh, hashtag love everybody. Love See ya. Peace. Time for some plugs. B -b -plugs. Yeah. Plugging it up. Plugging it up. Plug I don't what know. What I, what I was trying to do a new. It was like a new. You tried to do a, a new jingle, jingle. Like but I didn't like it. Yeah, because no. I see you bailed on it quick. He I was like, I don't it. like how this started. Yeah, I liked it. Oh, thanks. you just support everything. Thanks, I mean, James. just I'm in support of that that jingle. I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to support Black Man Can't Jump, oh, good transition. <laughs> uh, please go to uh, at Black Man. Wait, podcast. God. What's at Black Men Podcast on Twitter. What's happening? Yo, you can Black find Man us on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, Black Men Can't Jump, BlackMenPodcast.com. Good goodness. Uh, uh, okay, I don't know if we have a... No, no, we don't have a show. No, we don't up. have any upcoming shows, but you know what? We, we still... We still will have the Snapchats. Yeah, yeah it should be. I think one, one more. more one more Snapchat. I think one more Snapchat, one more Snapchat Monday. And Comedy we might Central have Snapchat. Fun cooking in there. We might have something fun cooking. We got some fun, fun cooking. cooking. Something yeah. cooking. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, you can uh, see me at John Braylock on Twitter and Instagram. Snapchat, John Braylock. JohnBraylock.com for videos and stuff. Okay, you can follow me at James Third Comedy on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, James Third Comedy dot com. Third is three R D. Okay. Um <laughs> Nah. Yeah, he's saying no. Jarrah that saying was Jarrah's no. plugs. His plugs no were to plugs. Nah. His plugs were nah. <laughs> His plugs were nah. So, all right. <laughs> Great. And uh next week we will be reviewing the film. What's love got, got to, to do, do with, with it? it. I got almost forgot to for do a with second. It. <laughs> got to do with it. What's love but a second hand emotion? That other song that they he said uh, that with Phil Spector was real good too. What was the deep I mean, river? that song was epic. I remember it. It's so hard because I it can't. was such an epic song that I was like, woo. Yeah. Anyway, we also have a special guest on that episode, Romany Malco. Yup, yup, yup. You know him from Fortio Virgin. Fortio Virgin, Weeds. Weeds. Uh, I mean, honestly, Mad so many Dogs movies. on uh, Amazon. Um, if if you're if you're a black woman, you're probably like, oh, is that the brother from uh, um, um, Think Like a Man? Only, yes, yes, it is. Only if you're a black woman, though. Yeah, well, that's that was weird. I'm saying, no, not I'm if saying, you're anybody else. I'm saying because, like, I mean, how many <laughs> men went to go see Think Like Think Like a Man? I saw we it. Think Like a Man. We, I think like a man. I already. saw the movie. I see what you're saying. Anyway, that will be <laughs> next week. What's love got to do with it? Starring Angela Bassett and Lawrence Fishburne. We gonna get into it, so we'll see you next week. Peace. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>